let me know how this sounds before we even get started because I'm not going to do a long ass podcast and this shit is not working right. I can see the green bar at the bottom over there. So it looks like at least the mic is working. But how does it sound? Somebody let me know. How does it sound? Can't stand it because we was writing a good part. My homegirl Trina was there. My little sis Candace was there. Man, we was writing a good part of us live. But it'll happen again. You know what? This is what we do. This shit will be going on for months and months. We'll be back. Man, but I, I appreciate you. Know, thanks, Ryan. Ryan is first. Ryan, he's in the building. He's like, dude, I'm beating this time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what happens. Like sometimes like the mic must not be completely connected. And I do a sound test right before I get right before I begin. And everything works fine because in my headset it sounds good, but I don't know how it sounds on the other end. That's the only thing. Because when I'm testing it, I'm testing it through a different system and it sounds fine. And then I come back and it's like, ah, this shit don't work right. What if, what if? No, nah, but man, the story was getting good. Like I've, I've told you guys about the explosion before. Check, chat, check, one, two, one, two, what it do? Uh, I was first, but I couldn't type. That's funny shit. No sound, no sound. Logan Blocks is no sound. Then it's on you this time because it looks like it's jamming on mine. I don't know. It look, it seems like it's coming in. Man. Yeah, but, and it was, we was getting right into the good part of the podcast. What if, because like I said, it, it's rare that, you know, somebody from actually that, you know, from St. Louis or somebody I know actually jumps in on it. Every once in a while, my little sister would come in or something like that. But yeah, it was pretty cool, you know, for Trina to come in. Cause I've told the story about what happened the day that, you know, I was working on her van that day. And it was actually the first day that, just I thought my Bluetooth died. It was actually one of the first days that I picked up my don't be negative shirts. Now, if you go to my website, Jam BTs, you can see, you can read about the story about the day that I picked up those don't be negative shirts. It was that day. That's why shit went bad. So I went and like, I was working on her car because I was working on a fuel tank. I had to do the fuel sending unit. She's got the saddle tank that goes across the, the um, drive shaft. So I have to take the drive shaft off to get the tank out. It was taking so long and I had to go meet Drew to go get the shirts. Drew was way out in like Pacific somewhere, way the hell out. So it was snow on the ground. It was cold. So I left the garage closed and I took off. I should have left the garage open when I took off. I left it closed. I took off. And all of a sudden I was like, man, came back. You could smell fumes, gas, everything. It was it was way bad. It was bad because I had the tank and everything down a little bit, but I still had the drive shaft on there. I didn't get to yet. And that's what I was going to work on. I was going to go do the drive shaft. Trina was actually upstairs. She was in college at the time. So she was studying for school and everything. So she was upstairs studying for school and all that. And I was like, well, I got to go uh, get these shirts from Drew or whatever. I'll be back. And she lived across town. So she drove the van to me. So she drove to me and everything. So she had no other way home other than my car anyways. So I had to go, you know, get the shirts. I went and got the don't be negative shirts, came back, fumes everywhere, got ready to work within a matter of psh, 10 minutes of me showing up back at, at home. Boom. My whole life changed in that instant. Hers too. Cause she had to witness that shit. She had to see it. She heard it. And then for all the smoke, to, I mean, she couldn't even come downstairs because I was in a, a townhouse. All the smoke went upstairs. It was smoke on the ceiling, like soot. The whole place had to be clean before I could move back in. Cause it was soot all over the ceiling and everything. So excuse me. It was like, for her to come downstairs to see me look normal when she was studying to all of a sudden just seeing all the skin on my face gone. And it grew back like my skin just naturally grew back. I don't have skin grafts or nothing like that. I didn't look like this. Everything was gone like huge chunks of skin over my eyes and my jaws over my lip, like kind of like one of my lips is kind of white. But that's where all the skin was just gone. It was just gone. All of my arm, my neck. My shirt was on fire. It was bad. That was the day I thought I died. And all she she said, all I heard was this just gut wrench and just yell. Because when I got hit by those flames and that fire and that whole just a shock wave hit me and knocked me backwards. That's when I like yelled. I didn't know I yelled. All I know is that something came out of my soul and I thought I was dead. That was it. I didn't know I yelled. And the room went completely black, then completely bright orange with fire. It went black, bright orange. That's all I remember. I don't remember nothing. I remember hitting the door. I remember running. I remember running past all the motorcycles I had in there. Everything burnt. I remember, you know, the the sound 
just like my eardrums felt like it popped. Like I couldn't hear nothing because it was just like, boom. That's all I heard. And I, like I said, I didn't even hear myself scream. She said I heard a gut wrenching scream. I didn't hear myself. That's how bad it was. And so she was like, and I'm outside. I'm thinking I'm still on fire. I'm outside doing this and I'm taking all the skin off my face because I didn't know my face was burnt. I didn't know I had all that, the radiation burnt everything, shirt, everything. And she she witnessed it. I mean, for her to stand there and watch her friend literally in front of her change from a normal person to looking like a skeleton with muscle and all this shit showing like that quick. And it was like, you know, like I said, my skin all grew back. Like I went to the hospital because I couldn't stay there. The fire department said I can't stay there. They had to do a lot of shit. What up, Frank? I had they had to do a lot of shit to the house and everything. I couldn't move in. They turned all the gas off, everything. They had to do all our investigation, make sure there was no embers inside of like the ceiling and shit like that. So I couldn't stay there. So for about a week, I want to stay with my ex with Beth. So she kind of took care of me. I was gonna go to the hospital, but the hospital was taking too long. So me and Beth went to Walgreens and we went to Walgreens and we bought all of this shit to clean my burns out. To get all of the ashes, the flakes, the metal, the dirt, the grime. They had to get everything out of my skin and my hands, everything. So me and Beth sat in the bathroom for a week and slowly watched my body try to repair itself. And I couldn't do nothing but sleep because I had all my muscles and my nerves and shit was showing. I couldn't go outside. It was cold. So if I walked outside, my face froze and my whole body just locked up because it was just nerves and shit showing. So I stayed at her house and she would just go get food make food, do whatever, go back and forth. And I was just taking care of myself, you know, trying to get, and when your skin is healing, it, it turns into liquid. And so like my whole shirt was always wet because my skin was fighting to heal itself. It wouldn't scab up because it was trying to heal itself. It was trying to generate skin. And like I said, Trina sat and watched all this shit go down. She came and checked on me, you know, a couple of days, her, my brothers, everybody came down and checked on me real quick. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad, man. Oh, man. Weber says, my best friend's house caught fire. Baby was upstairs. We ran into a burning building. Turned out baby was already safe. Yeah. Fire. I tell people, man, when I hear about fires and shit like that, fire has life. Fire has life. Fire will fucking come get you. It has life. Fire is very directional. It does not discriminate. Fire will get you. It's like a monster. And when that shit roared, it pushed the garage doors out. It busted the windows. It was like... <laughs> And it was it shook the whole fucking building. It was like I was inside of a fucking dragon. And I'm like, this is how I die. This is how I go out. This is how I go out. And that's all I kept thinking. And it was a quick thought because it happened. I'm dead. I know I'm dead. This is how I go out. So next thing you know, I'm in front of my house, in front of the condo. And I'm just smacking the shit out of my face trying to get the fire off of me. But it was no fire on me. It was just my skin was already incinerated. Everything was already burnt by the, the whole bang. Just burnt me up real quick. So when I hear people talk about fires and shit like that, I wouldn't wish nobody to burn to death. It is it is very slow. It's very slow. It's yeah, it's, it will be a slow, painful death from the time you go to oxygen being around you to the fire consuming all the oxygen. It, it like it takes your breath away because the fire sucks in and and it like oxygen refills. So it goes back out. And that's how the garage door opened and blew up. Everything blew out. Because it sucked everything and blew everything out at the same time. And that's why I thought Trina was, I was like, the ceiling's going to collapse. I was scared. I'm thinking Trina's going to like fall through the floor and end up like where I was, where I just ran from. And she came running down the steps, top speed, almost falling down the fucking staircase. We barrel out of the fucking house. It was nuts, nuts. Yeah, TN. I mean, because it was a completely normal day. It was quiet. I'm working on the car. No problem. I'm going to get my girl back on the road. I'm going to get her back so she can head back across town. And at the time, her boyfriend was at home. Lonnie, he was at home. And he knows that she's got the van and she's down like working on the van with me and everything. He has no idea what's going on. None. This is a lot of time has passed. He has no idea. He's thinking the car is being worked on and everything. No idea. Yeah. Man, it's it. Hey, Melvin, it spreads fast. It's like. It has life. It, it goes from nothing to everything like instantly. There's like no delay. There's no s slow crawling of a fire. No, a fire consumes, man. It just it looks for something to latch to. And once it, that heat passes a certain point, then it's that it's on fire now because the heat, 
The temperature is past a certain point. It'll catch paper on fire, curtains, walls, wheels, cars, you. Because once it passes that certain temperature, a fire cannot be stopped. It's going to eat whatever it touches. And I'm like, this is how I go out. This is how I die. I, I burn to death. This is how I die. This is it. This is it. And that's all I could think of in that moment. In that one moment, I'm thinking, this is it. I'm, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, the next day, I'm like, well, I was doing something I love doing. I love helping people. I love working on cars. I love this and that. So, and I'm grateful I didn't die. But I was like, you know, at least I'm here, man. At least I'm here. And the whole time, you know, Trina, she's checking on me. She's like, Jeff, you okay? You good? I'm like, I'm good. I'm just, I'm at best right now. You know, I can't talk that much because my face is swollen. My eyes are swollen. I can't move my mouth because my lips are burnt. So I can't open my mouth and it's trying to solidify. So I can't keep opening and closing these wounds over and over by moving my face. I got to let my face heal. So I got to be completely still and just lay there and sleep for as long as I can. So in the midst of that, I feel bad that she doesn't have a car. She can't get to him from school. She can't get to him from work. She can't do shit. So I get on my computer and I start looking for another car. And I'm like, she don't know I'm looking for a car. I'm like, well, I know not to get a stick shift because that wasn't a stick shift van yet. So I'm like, I'm just going to buy an automatic. I didn't know what to buy a car or bike. So I said, well, I'll just buy her an SUV. She had a van. So apparently she needs space. So I'm like, I'm just going to buy her an SUV. So I found a guy selling an SUV. Me and him negotiated, talked about the price. I said, is it available? Cool, is it available? I asked Trina, hey, you busy tomorrow? I'm going to come pick you up. You good? I'm like, I'm good. I'm just going to come pick you up. So I picked her up and I met the dude like in North County and he met us in a big ass parking lot. And I pulled up to the SUV. I said, that's your truck right there if you want it. And she was like, what are you doing? I said, that's your truck if you want that truck. And she was, I'm like, test ride it. So we got out and the guy got out and we all sitting there talking and shit. And she's like, in her head, it's registering. She's like, holy shit, he just bought me a fucking truck. <laughs> it's like, you can see the smile on her face, and she's like happy. She climbed up. She had like this little minivan that the dealership sold her. It was fucked up, and they should have never sold it to her. That's why I'm fixing it. I mean, it's got the plates on it, the, the dealership plates. So she got into the fucking S, and you could see her. She was up. It was lifted and everything. She's like, I like this. I like this. She drove it, came back, got a nice engine in it, came back. I was like, so if you want it or what? She was like, I want it. So I just gave the dude the cash. We signed every. She had the title. She signed the title. They did all their little deals or whatever. And I got in my truck and my Escalade came back home. She got in her Durango. Everybody went their separate ways. And I just, it took me, a, it took me probably about, because that happened in March. And I'll tell you, it happened in March of 2015 because I was at the University of Northern Iowa a few days before watching Brian, Brian Karen's run. I was watching him win the NBC up at University of Northern Iowa on March the 2nd. This happened about third, fourth, or fifth. It was like the fifth. And so when that happened, by the time August came, so that happened in March. By August, my face only had patches. It only had like little patch. It, the skin was back, but the skin had no pigment. The pigment came back on its own. Everything came back on its own. I just had white patches on my face. I had like it was white over my eye, it was white on my lips, white on here. The only white left is a little slit right over my lip. That's the only white I got on me. This is a little darker. My cheeks sometimes could be a little darker, stuff like that. But other than that, it was like, you know, I was alive and my sister came and saw me. My little sister, Steph, came and saw me and she was damn near in tears. She was damn near in tears. And I was like, you know, when I'm alive, she was like, Jeff, your face. That's the first thing she said. She says, Jeff, your face. I said, I'm alive. I ain't worried about that shit. I could care less. I was like, I'm, I'm not dead. That's all I can care about is I'm not dead. So once my face started healing and I started getting pigment and everything back, that's when I, my life really went into high gear. I said, I'm about to start living every day like, like tomorrow's not fucking guaranteed. I went out and bought my dream motorcycle. The dude was like, I'm selling this M109R. I said, I want it. I said, I've always wanted a pearl white M109R. He said, I'm actually selling one. I said, well, consider it motherfucker bought. I went up there. I test drove it, gave him the cash, drove that shit back. There was no bullshitting no more. It was no more bullshitting. If I didn't live, I knew I was going to die. I'm going to die one day. So why not fucking live? I know it can happen. It is going to happen when you least expect it. Like, I didn't expect that shit to go down like that. That was a, a horrible experience. Yeah, not even fire, man. Not even fire, Jesse, brother. <laughs> he said, you came back better than ever. Hey, I tell you what, I came back with a true comprehension of life. A true comprehension of life. That... This shit is not guaranteed. It is not. 
no room for fucking fuckery, no room for error. Live it. When I walked away from corporate America, I was done with corporate America because I knew they didn't respect my life. They was telling me I couldn't go to my son's Halloween party. Well, my, this was my son's very first Halloween party ever at Citibank. And the company I was working for said I couldn't go to that Halloween party. So I said, I don't think I'm, I'm designed for corporate. I don't think so. And that's why, you know, even starting back then, I started kind of waking up, realizing what what life was really about. I'm like, I might not make a lot of money like I used to make in corporate. I might not, you know, have the glitz and the glamour and the nice cars and the nice houses. And all. I might not have all of that shit, but I'm still alive, though. That's all I gave a fuck about. I'm still alive. And with that, I can do things, man. I'll be out in these streets trying to make this money with everybody. I do the same shit everybody else do. I tell motherfuckers, there is no amount of subscribers that can keep you alive. There is no amount of, you know, YouTube views that can keep you alive. No, You see TikTokers dying every day. Instagrammers dying every day. Influencers dying every day. None of this shit will keep you alive. So you got to keep yourself alive. This is what you do. You keep yourself alive. You don't worry about none of this fucking social media shit. None of this political shit. None of this. Well, I'm mad at you. You mad at me. No, just stay alive every day. Live. If you want to eat ice cream every day with fucking old dusty ass donuts, eat that shit. Nobody can tell you not to. This is your life to live. It's your life to live. Which is why I don't have a problem with women. I don't have a problem with gays. I don't have a problem with like lesbians and stuff. I don't have a problem with nobody. Because it's day life to live. It ain't got shit to do with me. How I feel about anything is just an opinion. That's all it is. It's an opinion. It does not keep nobody alive. My opinion has never kept a single person alive. What's kept them alive is them navigating this fucking planet every single day. That's what's kept them alive. So I always tell people, fuck my feelings. I grew up in that era, man. Fuck your feelings. I feel the same way about myself. Fuck my feelings. Fuck my opinion. My opinion don't matter to reality. Reality is we're going to have some bills on this counter. Let's knock that shit out. Less stress. Less stress means you're having a better day. Binary ice cream. <laughs> Say, how much money you make in corporate? Oh, a lot. A lot. A few years, I was making over 100K. And I was like, honestly... I don't know, man. This shit wasn't worth it. Like all the money we made in corporate, it wasn't worth it. Ryan Montgomery, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. There's no way, no way I should have been making the amount of monies I was making when I wasn't doing most of the fucking work. We had housekeepers. We had cooks, chefs, waitresses, engineering who actually fixed the building and kept shit going. And I was making more than them people all because of my title. That shit to me don't make no fucking sense. I wasn't doing shit. I was walking in. I was running financials. I was helping people make decisions. I was doing, you know, analytics all the fucking time. I was in different. I was transferring stuff, transferring things back in. It was a non-revenue generating position, non-revenue generating. But that's why when you see corporations by other corporations, the first thing that go is management because they're not necessary. We're not necessary to the company. That company could have ran it fucking self. If they just automated everything we did, like AI, if they would have automated everything we did, they wouldn't need us. But you need people to make the fucking beds. You need people to make sure that the doors work. You need people to make sure, you know, the food is prepped. You need those people. And the only thing I could think about the reason why we were there is, is for stability, stability and thought. Because if we ran the financial parts, like Melvin said, it's very important. If we ran the financial parts right, it made all the other parts possible because you look at all the restaurants closing right now all the furniture stores closing all the trucking companies closing dealerships closing it's because of financial reasons it ain't because of staffing it ain't because motherfuckers ain't showing up to work no it's for financial reasons financial all we do is make sure the place can open up tomorrow that's it we make sure we got enough money to open up tomorrow by making decisions today by making moves today yeah 80 percent of twitter because a lot of motherfuckers are not necessary it's, it's so inefficient sometimes. And I'd be thinking, man, that's used to bug the fuck out of me. Because we'd sit up there laying off three and four people out of the departments. And I'm like, why are we making so much fucking money, but we got to lay off half that department? They don't even make what well, we, these people are making like $35,000, $40,000 a year. And we laying like five of them off. What the fuck? That shit don't make. I mean, one of us is equivalent to their three of their fucking salary. Leave three of them and get rid of one of us. Shit, at least you got three families taken care of, not three families lost. Instead, they keep these executives who are greedy as a motherfucker, taking all the money, taking care of their family and their friend. But yet you getting rid of all these other fucking people. 
These are a lot of families you're affecting. When you let that person go, that family is affected. You let 10 people go, that's at least minimum 10 families affected. But not only is it 10 families affected, but if those families are using daycare, then you're affecting 10 other families who are using daycare for these people now. So the shit starts, man. It's like, and these executives are making way too much fucking money. And I used to say that shit to myself. Motherfuckers will tell you, I didn't care back then. I would give people cars. I give motherfuckers motorcycles. I just give shit away because I'm like, I have too much. I have way too much. It's like, this shit is not necessary. Even like now, when I look at some of my shit around here, I'll be like, man, I should just give my son that truck. But then I think, how am I going to tow the fucking trailer? So then I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'm just going to buy him a little Honda. Fuck it. Because <laughs> sometimes you can have too much. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing this shit for? You, you can get greedy at some point. And as you start getting like, you get fat. Like I said, we were talking in one of these podcasts about staying hungry, staying hungry. And when you overfeed people like America got a lot of fat people, it's like you you just you're overfeeding people to the point where we get lazy because we don't want to work no more. We want to stay hungry. Oh, Jesse, you said, where can we get some merch? Uh, actually, I got some on my. Uh, well, let me do something. J and B D's dot C O M. That site right there, because actually I, I just sent out a, a couple of lots of shirt to, shirts today, and then I got a. He says I acknowledge that Spider Man blanket, man. My son been Spider Man. He's been like two years old. This motherfucker never get rid of that blanket. He's fifteen now. That blanket has been around for a long time. <laughs> that motherfucker's been washed a gazillion times, and it's still soft as hell. I love that blanket. Yeah, but a lot of times, like I said, I make these shirts, man, and I try to get them out in the mail as quick as possible when I'm not working because I know people want to wear the stuff. So I put out a whole a couple of lots of shirts this morning, got them to the um to the post office, got those out. Now I'm waiting on a new shipment of something to come in so I can finish my next big batch of fucking shirts. Cause like I said, I order inventory and I spend a lot of money getting shit in here so I can make everything to get shit out. Like I tell people, I never ask nobody for none. So even like Ryan, I appreciate the fact that you gave me the $4.99. I appreciate that shit because I never ask people for none. I do the best I can do. To, to give people the knowledge and the information, financial information and all of that. Oh, thank you, Ms. Lisa. Thank you, Ms. Lisa. I appreciate that. Truly appreciate that. For real. I mean, $20. Thank you for inspiring us to be all the best we can be. Real shit. And like I said, Lisa, I don't ask people for anything. I just, I wake up every day and I do the best I can do. I know I don't make what I used to make back then. And you guys are really helping me because on days that I don't work, on days that I'm either making nothing and this and that, I'm sharing like knowledge with you guys, insight on, you know, corporate, you know, doing things as far as how we drive and how we can make more money, being more efficient. I don't mind sh like sharing my, my financial knowledge because I help rich people stay rich. Why can't I help us stay afloat? I could help us stay afloat. And that's what I want to do with this channel. I show people how to work on cars. I tell people, you know, stick with it, stay on it. You know, you can save, you know, seven hundred dollars. That's seven hundred. You ain't got to spend. Just try to do it yourself real quick. Even the way we go out and, and drive, Lisa, I tell people all the time, you know, don't let them play you out. Don't let them do this and do that. And I put, you know, uber legal stuff online. I put what I talk to support with about online to give people the confidence and the faith in knowing the money can be made. You can make certain decisions that other YouTubers may not tell you about these decisions. They may be so scared because they've never looked into it. They never talked to support. They ever, never went to legal. So they're going to have you afraid to trust you and trust how to make money and trust, you know, being efficient out there. If we, I mean, we've had people in the, in the chat over the last few days. I've seen at least three people make it close to five hundred dollars. One made forty five. One was four thirty five. One was over four. I'm like these people and they're all low AR people, low AR. So we know that that the information is getting out there, how we all drivers chat together, how we all talk and everything. The information is getting out there. To, to do this industry the way it should be done so we don't all have to struggle. And a lot of times I do go out on a limb. I do put a lot of stuff, you know, in my videos that corporate can look at and be like, you know, what? we need to slow his ass down. That's why they gave me that fucking one star. <laughs> but I put a lot in these videos and I'm willing to put myself out there to give people the confidence to show that you could make more money. We don't have to worry about 20, 25 an hour. We can make that per ride and we can do two of those rides an hour. We can make 50 bucks an hour. Do two $25 rides an hour. That's all you can do. Just cherry pick. You're making 50 bucks an hour. And you do that shit for five hours. You just made 250 bucks. And you're like, dude, I made 250 in five hours. You didn't have to work 10 hours like we used to. You just got to learn how to like operate and navigate within this system. And that's why I appreciate, you know, 
chopping it up with a lot of drivers. I answer a lot of questions in chats. I answer a lot of questions, you know, do, through comments and stuff like that. And like, I appreciate, you know, the super chats like Lisa, you know, she's dropping the 20 Ryan's dropping the 499. I mean, I appreciate that stuff because I've been waiting on my tires all week. I haven't made a dime all week, <laughs> but it's okay because I feel secure. And I want you guys to know that we don't have to fear if we have to take a few days off because the, the time I've had off, I've been trying to crank out shirts, make shirts, do things, get things going. And even like Lisa, the fact that you even like just gave me that, like, Hey, here you go. I want to do something back for you. I want to be like, I would love to give Lisa a shirt. Like hit me up an email, email me at ubergfaz at gmail.com and be like, Jeff, I'm like, Hey, what size you wear, Lisa? I got you. Ubergfaz at gmail.com. I got you. What size you wear? And I'll get you something because nobody asks, you know, I don't ask people for anything. People are just giving out of their hearts and all of that. And I'm like, if I'm spending all this money on inventory and on, you know, getting design stuff and getting all these things, these machines and everything like that together, I can at least return that energy back out there. I can return that energy back because we can't be greedy with life. We just got to live this shit. We got to wake up and live this shit. We can't be greedy with it. Yeah, exactly. Lisa, that's it right there. Efficiency. Showing me how I can make money, make more money without working so hard. Yeah, that's right. And that's what it is. It's called efficiency and we're working smarter. Other people can say, I want to start driving at 430 in the morning and I'll be done by 11 o'clock at night. That's not necessary. That's not in some markets. That is not necessary. But you have to know your market enough to know. I want to be able to know that if I need two hundred dollars a day, can I make it? No question. No question. You're going to decline a lot. Do not stress and worry about your AR. Don't stress over that, because just like that email that I did to support, they set it up to where you can choose the rides that are that are better for your situation. And it's like a lot of people don't, oh, no, my AR can't dip. If it dips, they're not going to send me rides. We got low AR people making 500 bucks a day, working 10-hour days. Easy. Easy. That means I can make 250 working five hours, and I'd rather make the, the 250. No, uh, this is Jeff. If you look at my Discord, you'll see one of your phrases there, LOL. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. I'm going to have to check that out now. Are you on Discord? That's ride share, Lisa. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> Man, what up, Silver Fox? What up? What up? What Melvin say? Man, they gave me a one drop me to four ninety nine. I bet you with this raggedy app. Yeah, them apps got me, man. They got me. They gave me a one star. They was like, slow your ass down. All right, bet. I'm gonna go check that out, Lisa. I'm gonna check it out on on Discord. But like I said, if we can go out and we know we can trust ourselves, trust ourselves to know our market and to know when it gets busy, this is how I'm gonna work it. If it's not busy, I'm going to go out, try to make $75, $80 just to float me over for the next day. But with that $75 and $80, you're only spending like $10 in fuel. That's it. Because you're doing nothing but short trips. You ain't going nowhere. You don't have to spend $75 in fuel to make $75. I remember back in the day, people's whole tanks of fuel, $60, $70 for a full tank of fuel to make 200 bucks. They was profiting $130 off of a full tank, $130 off of a full tank of gas. We can make 130 off of a quarter tank doing it the way we do it. That means off a full tank, we do it four times. We're busting out 520 bucks for a full tank of fuel when these people are making 200 for a full tank of fuel. We drive differently. And we have to do it like this if we want to stay in business, if we want to focus on profits and, and not chase this elusive, I need to stay busy mantra. You don't need to stay busy. Stay put. Stay in your area. Find out where all the busy people are. Stay put. Wait for the surge to drop. Go offline if you have to. Kick back for a second. Because when you burn, yeah, exactly. Two or three days to go through gas before you fill up again. That's how I like to drive. I hate going to the gas station every damn day. I hate that. Because it to me, it's money going out. Money going out. Every single day. Money. I want to wake up and not spend a dime. Go out and make as much as you can make. Take your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and shit with you. Eat that shit in the car. Get back to the house, didn't spend a dime. So everything you made is going towards your profit margins. Everything you made is going towards your profit margins. Next day, you go out, you do another quarter tank of gas. When you start getting down to about a quarter, a little less than a quarter, then you go fill up. Three days of passing that time. That's how we drive. We're not those, you know, I'm going to drive 10, 12 hours a day driving. I'll park my shit in the parking lot and hang out until they send rides. If they don't send rides, either I can get a dollar mile ride and shoot somewhere else or just call it a night. Like Silver Fox said, today was dry. Some days are like that. It gets dry. 
And so you say, you know what? I got to head back. I got to head back. Thank you, Jesse, my man, 499, playing the music over there, playing the trumpet. Do, do, do. <laughs> and got a little one next to him. <laughs> I just saw that. He got a little dude next to him playing the trumpet, too. Do, do, do. That's me and Jesse. We like, beginning to race. Let's get your engine started. Uber's like, motherfucker, we going to one-star all y'all ass today. Speed if you want to. Watch what happened. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it is, Ryan, man. You got to stay smart with this shit. A lot of people, they they want to stay busy. We're trying to stay smart. Profits are for the patient. Profits are for the people that know how to invest money and kind of wait and wait it out. They're, they're not quick people. Profits are for those people that's going to sit around, be patient, let shit develop, capitalize on the opportunity. That's how you get profits. People out there sucking up their themselves, they just running ragged, running left like a chicken with his head cut off. They all over the fucking place. Run. And at the end of the day, like, oh, man. Woo -woo. I made $275, but it cost them $60 in gas to get that, where it cost us about $25 in gas to get that. Melvin, that's what's up. <laughs> that's funny. What does that say? Oh, man, it's incredible. What's that? Incredible. That's funny shit. I like that. And he got the hat on. He's got the CU hat on. That's cool. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Man, man. Oh, I appreciate that, Jesse, man. Real shit, man. You, Lisa, Melvin, Ryan, all y'all, man. I appreciate that. Because like I said, I've been, I've been waiting on these tires to come. I haven't been working. But it's cool, though, because when I get back out, trust me, and I can't wait till the weather dips a little bit so I can kind of go back out a little earlier. If I can start getting out, let's say about 6 o'clock, but I go to the outskirts. If I get in my car, I drive to the outskirts and kind of hang out till 6, then I can kind of add a little more time. Because right now, I'll be going out 8, 9 o'clock at night when the sun drops and it's cooler out so I ain't burning my car up. But if I can just add a couple of more hours on the front end, then either I don't have to drive till four or five in the morning or I can just leave it like that and really make some good money on the back end. We're going to figure this shit out, man. A lot of us, we're still figuring out the market, especially in the fall. We need to figure out this football season because we know the slow period is coming. We know it's coming. So we all need to bank. Get out. Bank. If you say, man, I'm going to go out for two, three hours a day. See if you can go out for two, three hours. Do all good runs. That's it. Take no bullshit runs. And a lot of people say, well, I got to stay busy. Hang out, wait, because you're going to get a $24 run for like six miles. You're going to get that run, $24, six miles. You end up with like three of them. You're going to make $75 on three rides, 75 bucks in three rides, and you're still in your same neighborhood. You ain't even went nowhere yet. You're like, dude, I'm, I'm technically like two miles from my house. I done made $75 on three rides, and I'm around the corner from my house. That's how we got to drive like that. Because when you do six rides like that, you had $150. And people are like, how in the fuck are you averaging $25 a ride? How are you averaging? You being picky about it. Being picky about it. Oh, do fares go up at night when I was surges? Mm, on UberX, surges, uh, prices do go up. I will say that UberX has that sliding scale. So UberX will send you something with no surge on it, but it'll be from a busier area. And you know people are getting rides. And you'll be like, oh, shit, hold up, man. This is $8 for like, you know, 2.5 miles total. It's no surge on it, but they're they're moving their prices up because it's just that time of night when they know they they got to pay drivers or drivers ain't taking that shit. Uber does it. Lyft doesn't do that. Lyft, you need a surge. You need something because Lyft will give you the same rate no matter what time of day or night it is. And they'll have your ass out here for two dollars and sixty two cent picking up four motherfuckers at once. And it's like, dude, I'm not picking up four people for no two bucks. I'm done. <laughs> just, oh, Silver says, I never felt football help my area as much as my area. Flex, man. <laughs> hey, Flex, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. That's funny. He says, your last driving video stopped being the angry driver. Fuck them raggedy non-tipping motherfuckers. Thanks for everything you do. <laughs> Real shit, man. Real shit. But sometimes you got to do that, man. You got to do that, man. I appreciate that, Flex. I appreciate that, brother. That really helps me, bro, man. He says, stop them angry fucking non-tippers, man. Shoot. Oh, yeah, you can do it, Lisa. You can do it. That's fine. Totally fine. You're a moderator. You can do that. You got that. It was totally cool. And that's the thing about my channel. Even with the mods on here, I don't really, like, monitor what people post and stuff like that. I mean, Lisa, if you like, hey, this is a fun video for people that want to watch. Because some people might save that shit in another, like, window or something. I don't know. And all we do is share knowledge and information with each other. This is these raggedy non-tippers get to step in. Hell, Yeah. <laughs> Man, Flex, you killing me with that shit. Them rag angry driver, fuck them non-tipping raggedy motherfuckers, man. That's funny shit. That's funny shit. That's how I feel, though, man. And that's one thing. A lot of people don't get my channel. 
my channel, you know, is it, just it's how I, I'm not corporate. I used to be corporate. I'm nothing close to it now. I'm just like I said, we at the barbecue every day. We playing cars. We playing bones. We hit, we kicking it every day. We kicking it. And this is how we talk. This is how we chat. No, this is by the time this stream is over, just going to best tires on the market. Hey, you know, at least I appreciate that shit. I cannot wait, cannot wait to get them tires put on because I'm like, come on. Because I know, and I think, like I said, I think Colorado's going to be in Arizona this weekend. I really think that. I'm not sure, but I think so. And I don't think I'm going to be able to drive. All the BMW runs 19s. I got 19s on. They put the M package wheels on this car. The 18s came with them, the 330 stock, and they went up to the 19s. So I got 19s on it. But hey, they'll be, they, hopefully, they'll be here by this weekend. I'm like, I'm looking every day at the shipping and tracking them. I'm like, please show up, show up so I can get this shit done. But like I said, my front scoop showed up today. The front chin splitter showed up today. So I'm gonna go drop that on. It's only 7 30. I'll be in my garage working two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm still in my garage tearing shit up. So I got tons of time to put that thing on. Yeah. You got to do them airports, man. You got to do them airports early. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Yeah, and that's the thing right there is like, you know, with the with the shirts and everything, I'm always going to put something crazy on that website, always, because I like a lot of the gear we wear because it's not, it's about us. It's about, and it's about the shit we talk about in these chats. It's about things we talk about in the comments, and we just have fun with it. We It's the energy we have, and not a lot of people have like custom gear for ride here. Usually it's an Uber shirt that just says Uber, and that's it. We got custom shit. We got shit that's funny, shit that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> but it's like, it's for us, it's what we do, it's who we are. It's like, I don't care. Is this GPU body bill? No, nah, man, I used to play sports a long time ago. I need to get my ass back in the gym for real, man. It's just like, because I, I think I'm, I still feel strong. But I'm I'm I know I'm not as strong as I used to be. I I could probably get back in there and, and get it again. Cause I'd be in a garage tearing shit up still. I'm always, you know, wrenching on something, I'm always pulling on shit. So I stay mobile and I stay active. I just I'm not as strong as I used to be, and I know that. What's this? Oh, my dog's in here. I'm like, what is he? He's in there kicking the wall. I started on a Chevy Cruze six-speed manual. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flex said, when you said take a picture of this finger, motherfucker. I was cracking a flock an hour. <laughs> They always fuck with me, man. They always give me like, hey, please take a photo. I'm like, man, take a photo with his fucking finger. I'll be like, I'll be in the screen like this. <laughs> They're gonna be like, thank you. <laughs> they give me a big check mark. Thank you. Like, yeah, quit fuck with me. God damn it. Y'all always trying to slide, do some weird shit to me all the time to get me off the app. Like I'm fucking, you know, not driving. Like, this can't be Jeff. He's way too fast. This dude was on that side of town. How's he already on this side of town? Take a picture, motherfucker. Now do you believe it's me? Yeah, it's him. Thank you for verifying. <laughs> like these fucking people be fucking with me. Then they sitting there one star me. You looks like you've been speeding. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers is raggedy. Y'all know y'all did that shit to me on purpose. You're like, we cannot let him stay a five star driver. He's talking so much shit about us on the internet. Make him a four point nine. What if? What if? <laughs> man, man. Oh, uh, Fresno State's gonna be here. Okay. So a Fresno State, man, that's money. That's money. Woo. No, I can't do no gym block, man. In the garage. No. Actually, I did a long time ago when, when COVID hit and they closed the gym because I was going to the gym a lot. Some of my early videos, I guess it's in Life Advice. I don't know what playlist is in, but it shows me at the park and I'm using my Jeep to actually work out with it. It's funny shit, funny shit. But it was working, though, because that's back when I was, that was back in what, 2020. Yeah, early 2020, when they first closed all the gyms, they closed everything. And I was still in my routine of working out a lot. So I took my Jeep to the park. I put the Jeep on the incline. I hooked that shit to fucking ropes and all this crazy shit. And I started using my Jeep as the weights. So I was like curling my fucking Jeep. <laughs> I was like benching my Jeep. I was doing squats with my Jeep because I was I had it on a good incline where the Jeep could just roll back and it would sit on these two uh, wheel chocks I had. So I was like, hey, that's what's up. I'm going to use my Jeep to work out with. Fuck the gym. Man. And how long? Uh, he said, hey, speeding bullshit with this raggedy app. That's right. Bring the Jeep out, Jeff. Man, I don't know. That Jeep got some. I went up to 37s with that thing. When I was first driving that Jeep, it had regular stock Jeep tires on it. I'm up to 37s. Them big ass tires, they get turning, man. I'll be all over the place. I'll be jumping curbs and shit. <laughs> I don't care. I'll be picking people up at the parties way down, just picking people up. 
JD in the place to be. What's good, Jimmy Denson? Hey, Chris says, Uber Jeep, how long do you plan to do ride share? I don't know, man. I was thinking, you know, I would like to get a, a really nice car, like a 7 Series or something like crazy, and only do like super, super upscale like ride share to where, you know, people, I can meet people in ride share and they will be like, hey, man, we need a private driver this weekend. Like my car is cool. I think it's just way too small. It's a fast car. It's fun to drive. It's, you know, it's it's not made for ride share. 330 is not made for ride share. Your motherfuckers just, like I said, it's got a hump in the back where the transmission sits. So people have to sit on a hump if it's three people in the back. It's not made for ride. I use it for ride share. It's fun. But once I get to a point where I want a bigger car, I think I'm going to get something bigger. And ride share is, is, to me, it's fun, man. It's an experience. It's life. And I would really like to, to be invested into it, but not 100% rely on it because they could de deactivate my ass at any minute. So I want to make sure that if I do have something going, it's still like, you know, I got a private base of clients out there that can help with it. Probably do some YouTube to help with it. Probably do mechanic work to help with it. Do anything I can use to help, you know, keep these bills off my fucking counter. And, you know, we know the apps are. We know how they are. One minute you could be doing fine. Great. This and that. Somebody could lie on your ass in a heartbeat. And he tried to run me over and he tried to run my kid over. And next thing you know, you deactivate it off somebody lying and shit. He's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I put reverse on and I went out the driveway backwards. You motherfuckers is at the front door. Then you got to get your dash cam out to prove they was lying, all that shit, whatever. Oh, it's possible in some markets to make 100K a year? Oh, it's very possible. I think, honestly, I think a lot of drivers we got on this channel are going to exceed that. With the way they're driving, they're going to exceed 100,000 a year with less miles than the average driver. The average driver, if they're getting 70 cents a mile, dollar a mile is what they like to take, shit like that, dollar fifty a mile, that means they've got to drive anywhere between close to 200,000 150,000 to 100,000 miles just to make $100,000. That's a lot of fucking tanks of fuel. Drivers on this channel, they be getting $3 a mile, $4 a mile. Frank was getting like $15 a mile the other night. King James got $40 a mile. I mean, you've got to get your, your, your average up. If you get your average miles up, cherry pick, and only do like high miles to dollar rides, $100,000, you can drive 50,000 miles at $2 a mile. Anybody can drive 50,000 miles a year. You can make 100000 with that. You can, at $4 a mile, if you're driving 40,000 miles a year, you're making $160,000. There's a lot of people on this channel that will not set up for no bullshit. They all got high averages. Their average miles are up there. They'll do a few little shit rides here and there to get across town. They might do something real quick, you know, get $1.15, $1.50 a mile. But no, I see a lot of drivers on this channel. $100,000 is going to be laughable with what they're pulling in. Not really laughable. I don't even say laughable, but it's going to be like, I could do that shit like part time. Because we know that sometimes during the year, we're going to be making two grand a week, three grand a week, working part time hours, not even full time hours. Imagine if we decided just one day, hey, I'm going to work double time hours and just knock that shit out for one week. The drivers on this channel working double time will be pulling in almost five G's a week. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Drivers on this channel working double time, they making people that work double time right now getting two G's a week, making twice as much as them, four or five thousand in a week. Why? Wow, 80 hours, 80 hours running fifty dollars an hour. These people are running 50 bucks an hour in the chat, 50 bucks an hour. 80 hours is four G's. And I'm like, they could do that shit. They could do it in certain markets. It's possible. So it doesn't surprise me that a lot of drivers are going to be banking more than $100,000 a year. Easily. Part-time, $60,000, $70,000. Easy. It's not going to be a struggle once you realize how the apps are set up. The apps are set up to give you a selection of what do you like to do. I like short rides at high dollars. Okay, we'll get you as many of those as we can. The high AR drivers, they're going to be like, what do you like to do? I like to stay busy. Okay, we're just going to send you shit to keep you busy then. You're easy. All right, we're going to send you shit to keep you busy. Hey, here's, you know, 40 miles for $28. That motherfucker will take it. He just wants to be busy. Ooh, I'm driving. 40 miles, 28 bucks. Ooh, this is $28 in the pot. We would take $28, but we're only driving like maybe eight miles. <laughs> it's like We're not driving no fucking 40 miles for sure. We'll be like, hey, $28, eight miles. I mean, look at some of my, my uh, airport runs in the morning. My airport runs be like, you know, six, seven miles, $35. I'm 
I'm averaging $5 a mile with some of these airport runs. So if I'm averaging $5 a mile and I could do that nonstop, I only got to drive 20,000 miles a year to make $100,000, 20,000 miles a year, I can knock that shit out in a few months. That's it. Short stops, high returns only. Because we got all year. Look at that. $83.45 minutes on Instacart. $83.45 minutes. And Wes ain't driving nowhere. He's not going far. He's doing like a stop here, a stop there, a stop here, stop there. Okay, man. I went like, you know, 13 miles total. $83. 13 miles and 45 minutes probably. $83. That is a high profit margin driver. That's what I'm talking about. There's people on this channel that ain't out there bragging, oh, I started at 4.30 today, I drove till midnight, man, I made $280. No, no, we brag down. We say, hey, I made $83.45 minutes, or I made, you know, $16 driving three miles. That's the shit we talk about. We like, and we try to replicate that. I want to keep doing three-mile trips for $16. I don't worry about $2,000. I don't worry about $2,000. See, it was one stop, like 17 miles. Yeah. Because you ain't going nowhere for that price in 45 minutes. You can't go that far in 45 minutes. So you have to be going definitely less than 20 fucking miles to get $83. Right? You ain't paying that shit. <laughs> it's like, because I can look at how many like minutes you work and say, okay, so you had to go at least this many miles. Because if you can go 100 miles an hour, if you could drive 100 miles an hour, then I can say in 45 minutes, you went over 100 miles. But most people are driving 15, 20 miles an hour because we stop a lot. We drive, we stop. We're averaging. And sometimes my car says I average 13 miles an hour. That's really what it says. I'm, I'm average. The distance I'm traveling is 13 miles an hour because I just be around ASU just going in fucking circles. That's it. <laughs> and I'm getting like $5 a mile. And so that's like, what, 65 bucks I'm making that hour. And I'm like, dude, I just go 13 miles an hour. That's all I do. I'm just going in a fucking circle in the neighborhood. 13 miles total, $65. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's right, Mel. That's it, man. Yeah. And your driver, Ken, says, them short rides in college towns are only good for me when there's a street. That helps a lot because you set your filter. You ain't going nowhere. You're not leaving the neighborhood. And you picking up like the same group of kids over and over, just running in circles, running in circles. That shit's crazy, man. Crazy. And I'm like, and I tell people, I want to stay in a certain area, so I'll make sure I don't take no fucking nature hikes. When I see them nature hikes hidden, I don't want to go to that area yet because I'm not going to Scottsdale because I'm already where I want to be. I just want to go in circles in Tempe or I want to do circles in Mesa right now, do circles downtown Phoenix. I don't want to keep going back and forth, back and forth, back. That's too many miles. That's way too many fucking miles. I could do that shit like this in one little small area and make more money just doing this shit, not going nowhere. 13 miles in an hour. If I can average $6 a mile, that's going to be what? $78 an hour I'm making. And I'm just going in fucking circles. $78 an hour and I'm going 13 miles just going in fucking circles. You've got to drive these apps in a way that you know you're going to get higher profits. Don't worry about the passengers. The passengers are going to be who they're going to be. They're going to find a ride. Don't worry about them. Because some busy high AR motherfucker, ooh, 22 miles, $17, I'll take it. And they'll do it. They'll do it. And they'll probably get $17 with a $5 tip. So they're getting 22 miles, $22. They're getting $1 a mile. Meantime, you're getting five, six dollars a mile. So they have to drive five times further than you, do five times the amount of trips than you to make the exact same amount of money as you because you're getting five dollars a mile and they're getting one dollar a mile. So if they go a hundred miles, they're making a hundred dollars. You go a hundred miles, you're making five hundred dollars. And that's where we make the gap up for, for not taking them long ass nature hikes. We just kind of do our own fucking thing. 14 rides, $190 in five hours for 50 miles. That's the kind of shit I like. When people be talking about, oh, I made $2,600 a week. No. Did you make it like how David made it though? Or did you take a whole bunch of fucking nature hikes? If you made a bunch of na nature hikes, your profit margin is really low. You probably made twenty six hundred, but you spent like a thousand to get there, so you really made sixteen hundred. That's what you really made. David, he ain't going nowhere. He drove fifty miles, hundred ninety bucks. That's almost four dollars a mile. At four dollars a mile, you drive twenty five thousand miles one year. You made a hundred grand only driving twenty five thousand miles, where somebody else has to drive over a hundred thousand miles to make that same amount. You got to do this shit the smart way, man. Do this shit the smart way. 
We got all year to do this. We got, I ain't in no rush. I ain't trying to get nowhere. I'm like, Lisa, I'll just keep going in the same fuck circle. I'm like, Rasha and Lisa, keep driving in the same neighborhood, just driving circles all day. You ain't going nowhere. You just making money. You ain't got nowhere to be. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, you ain't, when you get in your car and drive, you don't go here. To, motherfucker, I ain't, I'm gonna probably just go in the same square all fucking day in the same square. I ain't got nowhere to be. <laughs> it's like, shit. Man. Made 2,600, but drove 7,000 miles. Real shit, real shit. I'm like, dude, how the hell? 2,600, but you driving to like, you know, 50 cent a mile, half them damn trips. That shit don't make no sense to me. You don't, like I said, they will never, a lot of these people will not tell the detail of what they do because they know the devil is in the details. You can see how smart a driver is based on the detail of them making that number. What's your detail? Because I want to see profit margins because that's what accountants do. Auditors do that shit. We dig into the details of the financial transaction. We call it analysis. You analyze how this transaction worked out. I want to see the gross. I want to see the net. I want to see the input. I want to see the output. I want to see the time. You want to see everything involved in it. But a lot of these channels, oh man, I made 2,200 last week. Okay. Yeah, but I had to drive 80 hours to do it and I drove almost 1,500 miles. Yeah, you drive about a dollar a mile average. And so... You going out? Let me let this dog out. Hold up. You ready to go out? Here. Go. 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 Or not. All right. There. Get up under there. He wasn't ready to go. I thought he was ready to go outside. He wanted to come lay up under here. All right. Lay down, buddy. Yeah. But Jamil, that's what it is, man. It's like, what is that? I spent about 400 a week on Tesla rent. I'm about 1700 so far this week. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. And you've got to get out there and you got to know how much you invest in something so you can actually see your true profit margin. Your true profit margin is what you're actually making. Because expense is expense. It's money gone. You got fixed expense. You got variable expense. Fuel is our variable. Most of our fixed expenses are insurance and our car note. Those are fixed. That's directly attributable to the business as being a fixed expense. That shit don't change. So if we want to create profit margins, we work with our variable expenses. We work with fuel. You work with maintenance. You got to do shit to, to say, I need to create space. Fixed expenses, you ain't creating. It is what it is. And so we do a lot of short trips. That's how we adjust our variables. And a lot of people don't understand. How are you guys making so much money, though, man? Y'all making? I'm driving Uber, too. We both driving Uber, but you guys are making a lot of money. Variable expenses. You've got to understand how the business works and you've got to have a business mind to do it. And so many people say, you know, ride show drivers are not that, you know, skilled. And that, like I, we say that shit all the time, not that skilled, not that skilled. It's like we're not. But to run a business takes skill. You got to have business acumen. You've got to have business skill in order to run the business. So you can do ride share, but without business skill, you're going to end up right back at a W-2 because ride share won't be able to cover all your bills. You're not having profit margins to cover all your bills. You're covering the car. You're covering the fuel. But then when it comes time for rent, that's the life expense you got to cover with this business. Groceries, that's the life expense. Entertainment, clothes, those are all life expenses that we're trying to create and we're trying to cover by doing this business. If you cannot cover life expenses with doing ride share, you're not doing something right. And so I'm one of those people that, uh oh, was that? Yeah, you got to know your number on expenses. That's right. That's right. And if you don't know that number, you're out there spinning your wheels in mud. You don't know what you're doing. You're just aimlessly out there driving, driving, logging hours. I'm up at 4 30 in the morning and I go till midnight every night. What's your expenses? I don't know. I'm just out doing it, man. And most likely, if you're doing it like that, you're probably eating while you're out. So you're digging a hole in expenses just by eating. So now you're spending all this money on food, fuel, everything else. All the profits you make and ain't even making it back to your house. We're trying to bring profits back to the house. I'm spending as less as I can spend out on these streets to bring all the profits back to the house because you've got to live off that. This is our job. This is what we do. We're not fucking around. This is what we really do. And a lot of people, man, how do you guys afford these nice cars and these nice houses and these nice... Motherfucker, I shop one. I shop at Goodwill. All my motherfucking ride share clothes, my my shorts and shit like that. These all come from the Goodwill. I order all my T-shirts off of eBay and shit like that. So I'm not spending a whole bunch of fucking money. That's right. I'm goddamn crusty donuts. I gotta go to Bosa. I can't eat the Circle K ones because they charge me full price. I can't fuck with Circle K. I can't eat no two three dollar fucking donuts. <laughs> like, unless I'm way down and out and I'm far away from a Bosa, then I got a fucking break. 
Now I got to walk up in this motherfucker looking like Krusty Dusty arguing over a motherfucking donut. Like, man, these donuts been in there for like 30, 40 fucking minutes. These ain't even fresh. <laughs> Still got to pay the full price. Man, fuck this dusty ass donut. Kick this motherfucker over the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ryan, you right, man. You right. You got to buy oil and filters in bulk. I bought six filters, six filters for my BMW, six oil filters for $24 total. Because you got to buy that shit in bulk. Now you go get an individual filter from BMW itself. It's going to cost you $28 per filter. You're going to be spending about $28 per filter. I bought six for $24. I just did my oil change the other night because I'm waiting on these tires. So I, and I had the big 12 quarts of oil. You buy that for $50. 12 quarts. That's three oil changes. You can do three oil changes for 50 bucks. And plus you bought those damn things, man. Got to do that shit, man. Got to do it. Yeah. Oh, what, Tony, he put, oh, Tony's got his baby shower up there. He says, thank you, Tony. I heard Vinny mention that this morning, but I was in the shower. Yeah, you got to get, hit Tony stuff up. He's got the kids on the way. Kids on the way. We got another ride show driving the future. That kid going to be driving a, a flying car. <laughs> Is that what Jamil said? Uber's the business, brother. You're right. This is a business. We got to run it like one. Bottom line, profit is what makes the world go round. That's how we pay our bills. Real shit. We don't pay our bills off of just being busy. You can't just be busy. Melvin says, my goal is trying to get $10 per mile. Trust me, brother. Trust me. I'll be on that shit. When I be seeing these concerts and these events and all that shit going on, I'm thinking like you thinking. It's too many people thinking minimum. I tell motherfuckers, this shit's like target fixation. When you focus on something, you end up getting that shit. When everybody talk about minimum wage, I want minimum wage. Minimum wage should be, why ain't minimum wage? These motherfuckers end up getting minimum because that's all they talk about. Now, when you talk about, man, I'm trying to get $10 a mile. Your brain, your body, your mannerisms, your energy, everything is focused on getting $10 a mile. You ain't worried about, well, my minimum is a dollar per mile. My minimum is a dollar fit. You keep saying that shit, you're going to start taking them kind of fucking rides. Dollar ride. Well, that's my minimum. I'm taking it. It's my minimum. Dollar fifty a mile. Well, that's my minimum. I'm taking. No, think about ten dollars a mile. I see a dollar fifty a mile come, kick that shit out because I know there's a big ride coming up. There's a there's a two three dollar two three mile ride coming through the pipe. That's gonna be like fifteen sixteen dollars. If I can get a tip and a surge on it, I can push it over twenty. I can close to that ten dollars a mile. I can get there. So when you think maximum, it makes you act maximum. You start looking at shit in the maximum capacity. You stop looking at those minimum things. Even when we ride motorcycles, the first thing we say is when you ride the motorcycle, look through your turn. When you're turning, when you're racing them, look through your turn because where you're looking is where you're going to end up. So don't look down. Don't look at don't look at the grass. If you look at the grass, you're going to end up in the grass. Look through your turn and you're going to start handling that fucking bike. You're going to start really counter steering the shit out of that bike to get that bike to go where you're looking. Because if you're not going where you're looking, you know you're not counter steering hard enough. You're not leaning hard enough. You're not really getting into that shit hard enough because you're focused on where you want to be. If you're looking at the grass and you turning and you ending up in it, that's where you're going to fucking end up because you're not looking where you want to be. Target fixation when it comes to that money. Look at where you want to be. Don't look at minimum. Don't look at dollar amount, dollar fifty. Don't look at that shit. Fuck that. Don't look at that. Get locked in. When you locked in the maximum and you be like, dude, I want $3 a mile all night. I want $4 a mile all night. You gonna fucking get that shit. If you, sh one night I was driving, I made like a, in a, like an eighth of a tank. I think an eighth of a tank, I made like 120 bucks. That would have been $240 for a quarter of a tank. $240 for a quarter times four, that's $960. That's almost $1,000 for one tank of gas. There's people out there doing that shit. Me, I'm trying to get there. I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm still, I'm focusing on that shit. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, come on, man. And dollar fifty a mile rides ain't going to get me there. Dollar a mile rides ain't going to get me there. I'm focused. I know where I need to be. If that means I got to sit in this motherfucking parking lot for five more minutes, like I, people are like, well, you're in a parking lot. You're waiting. You're just waiting. I know motherfuckers who sit at home on the couch for three months waiting on a better job opportunity. Hey, man, why don't you just go work at McDonald's while you wait on that? No, nah, man, no, nah, I ain't working on no McDonald's, man. This, this corporate office finna call me, man. Corporate finna call me. Okay, I'm waiting on this job at FedEx. I'm waiting on this job at UPS. Well, go work at McDonald's while you're doing it. No, nah, man, no. Nah. i just rather sit at home and play my video games and shit till FedEx call me. I'll play my video games till the UPS call me, man. I ain't taking no fucking McDonald's job. So those people that go three months saying, no, nah, man, no, nah, three fucking months. 
We go 15 minutes going, no, 15 minutes. We say, no, nah, I don't want that bullshit. For 15 minutes, we say, I don't want that bullshit. Y'all wasting time. You motherfuckers wasting time. Why you sitting the fuck at home for three months? No, nah, man, I'm waiting on UBS. I'd rather do 15 minutes away for a better offer than waiting three months for a better fucking offer. Because in 15 minutes, I go from not making nothing to making what I was looking for. In three months, it takes you to go from making nothing to finally getting what you was looking for. It took you three motherfucking months of bill stacking. It took me 15 minutes. How, how much of bills do I create in 15 minutes if I ain't doing shit? In 15 minutes, my fixed expense is my fixed expense. My mortgage, my car, all that shit's fixed expense. Everything's fixed. The only thing I can alter is variable. If I'm not doing shit, then that means I'm covering my fixed and I'm not increasing my variable. I ain't doing shit. I'm not driving around. I'm not eating. I'm not spending money. So give yourself those 15 minutes to recalibrate, to analyze, to break down, to wait till that good offer come. Because when you wait that 15 minutes, damn. $36 for a seven mile ride. I'm so glad I ain't take that, you know, 10 miles for $11. So glad I ain't take that 10 miles for $11. Because I just got $25 for going seven miles. Damn. That's what it costs when you're patient. Profits are for the patient. Even in stock market, profits are for the patient. And all we're doing, we're selling our time to the apps. I tell Lyft, I'm online with Lyft. That motherfucker just running. Be in the background, just running. Uber's running. Whoever pays me the most, you got my car. You got my time. I'm not in a rush to fuck with them. I'm not in a rush to fuck with them. I'm really not. I can sit in this parking lot and kicking all these dollar ass rides out. I'm not in a rush. But then Lyft sees that shit and Lyft says, Lux ride, $17 for a mile. Oh shit, you gave me a Lux ride. That's what I'm talking about. Let's do it. Because they knew I wasn't taking none of them other shit rides. They knew it. Turn Uber off real quick. Uber says, oh, shit, he must have got a ride through Lyft. Why? Because that motherfucker just went offline. He's been offline for like 15 minutes. <laughs> it's like, damn it. Well, when he get back online, trap him. Give him that goddamn $8.50 surge. Tell him it's four miles. We'll pay him like, you know, $13 for four miles. So now Uber wants to be in the mix because they know I'm offline. I'm working for somebody else right now. I'm offline. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It says, we provide high quality service on our on our clean luxury vehicles, we deserve to make higher profits. Real shit, Melvin, real shit. Because it costs money, man, all these leather seat cleaners. I mean, it's like $7 for one bottle of this shit. And this bottle might last me two or three weeks. Seven bucks a bottle for that. Tire shit, four fifty. dollars This might last me a few nights. You know, the wax cleaner, wax $13. That might, I mean, all this shit adds up. We ain't just driving around some old dusty ass motherfucking wagons and shit. A motherfucking chuck wagon with horses and shit. Yeah, get up, motherfucker. Yeah. These ain't motherfucking dusty ass chuck wagons. These is real fucking nice cars. We taking care of this shit. Floors and everything. What is it? Disneyland shorties help me in the morning. Tip rate is much as higher than normal. Real shit. Because people going to Disneyland, I always say, happy people tip. Miserable people don't want to fuck with you. They mad anyways. They get in the car. That's why I hate picking up miserable ass people. When you got people going to clubs and having happy, having fun, they more likely to fucking tip you. Way more likely to tip you. That's why I used to get like eight out of ten tips all the time. Now I get like one out of five. These raggedy motherfuckers, man, either they stealing from me or you just not tipping me no more. I don't know. I think they stealing from me. And it's like Rob Flo says, some drivers are a victim of their own laziness. They wait to the end of the month to start hustling. They end up taking 50 cent a mile rise and attempt to make ends meet at the last minute. Procrastinators, man. Real shit. Real shit. Procrastinators or profiters. You got one of the two. If you're a profiter ride, hey, you're gonna get all profits. And you chasing that shit every day. You out, so you ain't gotta procrastinate. Procrastinators, they wait to the oh man, I gotta do 30 rides in two days. I gotta hurry up and do so. Of course, they take a 50 cent of my rides all day. Why? Because they procrastinated for two or three days. They didn't do shit. They were still spending the money they had from the last time. They all oh, yeah, man. I'm still spending that money. And I'm sitting there like Shit, man, we don't procrastinate. We sit, we get profits. So when it comes down to the wire, we know we can make the money because we've done it before. So many, so we don't have to take 50 cent a mile. We kick back. We know what it feels like to wait till the appointments and reservations start early in the morning. We know what it feels like to be on the outskirts of town to grab people to bring them to the airport. We know what it feels like to let the airport hike die down and there's three or four people left that need rides out of there and you get a banger. You get a fucking banger. Man, I'm going to Scottsdale. Okay, shit, it's like seven miles up, $32, banger. Yeah, that's it, we getting that salmon, man. We ain't waiting on no motherfucking peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the road. 
This ain't your seven. Hey, boo boo, motherfucking ass. <laughs> Every time you see a driver with a high AR, hey, boo boo. <laughs> Motherfucker, my AR is 91%. Hey, boo boo. <laughs> Dumb motherfuckers eating peanut. I'm going to give me your pickle neck basket, motherfucking ass. <laughs> Like, do you think you do better because you drive a BMW versus a Prius, even when you're doing extra lift? Nah, I think a Prius is more comfortable than my car. Real shit, because it's wider, it's more spacious, and you get more like airport rides with a Prius than you get with a BMW. BMW's got a very small trunk. The Prius is almost like the ideal fucking ride share car. It's just what it is, man. When they made them cars, they made them for fuel economy and shit like that. They got a big ass back space. You can fucking stack suitcases back there, take three people. I take people, people got, motherfuckers have actually had their suitcases in their laps when I pulled up to the airport. Because I'm like, I don't got no space back there. I'll put what I can back there. Motherfucker like, well, we'll sit the small one on our lap. <laughs> it's like, yeah, BMW. And I bet the next time they ask get to the airport, they see BMW on the app. Swipe, don't get that motherfucker. We just showed up with a suitcase on our lap in the last BMW. Fuck that. Swipe. <laughs> hey, boo-boo. <laughs> That's how those motherfuckers be, though, man. Shit. Like, when I got canned with my W-2, I was out doing 30 minutes after that. Hit 150 by the time I was supposed to be up. <laughs> That's funny shit. So you hit $150 by the time you're supposed to be up. That's what I'm saying. You're like, shit. Y'all can kick me out the building. And that's why corporate America hates this shit. They hate ride share. And ride share is trying to get people to go back to corporate. Because you can kick me out the door, and I can make more money in a few hours, and I can make working all day for y'all ass. The fuck? All I got to do is find me an event, find me somebody throwing a party or something like that, and just do a whole bunch of short rides from Curry down Scottsdale to the dorms, back up to Curry, down to, to in and out pick up somebody at, at uh, 910 or 901, whatever, 1001, those apartments, 1001, take them up to Curry, pick up somebody. Curry. I mean, you could do that shit all day. That's like two miles. Each ride is like eight or nine dollars. <laughs> you just doing that shit just back and forth. And corporate America is like, He's making a fucking killing. Yeah, because we ain't doing no dollar a mile fucking rides. I found my spot. I'm not leaving my spot. They'll try to throw a nature hike in that motherfucker. Hey, Jeff, grab somebody and take them all the fucking way up to 17 up north. We'll give you $22, 17 miles. I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> Somebody need that $22 that bad. Not me, because I can make that $22 in like six miles, four miles. Why do I got to go fucking 17? Yeah, man, corporate America, tch, bruh. It'll it'll take a, a goddamn act of Congress to get me to go back to corporate America. I mean, and people are like, man, but you got a degree. You could, you can always use your degree. Not in corporate America. I can, I'd rather use my degree for myself and my buddies and my friends, and we'll figure shit out with this shit. I learned all this education in accounting and finance for a reason. I don't think it was for corporate America. I think I was dead and because of just how my heart was set up, how my soul is set up. I wasn't set up to help rich people stay rich. I don't think so. I really wasn't. So... I think the way I was set up because I was born in the hood, raised in the hood, rolled in the hood. I was set up to give back to the hood. I tell motherfuckers to this day, I live in the fucking hood. Shit, this motherfucker around the corner from me got killed. Like probably what a year after I bought this motherfucker, motherfucker got killed. Like, hey, shit happens. I'm used to the hood. So I give back. I invest here. I have fun here. I help my friends out so we can all get money and we can stack profits and do shit here. That's what we do. Yeah, what Tony say? I'm in the process of opening my transportation company so I can do private trips here. Some other test drivers did that and make $1,400 a night doing events. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. You got to find out your niche. And for me, I like doing the party rides back and forth up and down Scottsdale Road. You can kill it. All the big SUVs, all of the uh, Yukons, the big black Teslas, all them guys, they're easily, when they do events, if we can make, let's say, three, 400 event. They're making 14, 1500 in that exact same event. They're doing it. And it's like they're not even going nowhere. It's just people want to save money. So instead of everybody getting like two and three people in a the car, they're rather pack like five, six, seven in a, in a big ass SUV and everybody just split the bill. So it's a lot more economic for six people to split the bill than for two people to ride my car. They're rather just say, hey, why don't we just ride with our friends? Okay, cool. So they go ride with their friends. Now everybody's splitting the bill. The SUVs make a killing like that because people are starting to think of the economy of it all. They can ride in luxury for an economy rate if they all split the bill. It ain't a bunch of rich people riding around. It's a bunch of smart motherfuckers riding around. And it's like, that's why I'm like, why the fuck are we like 
like all these big ass SUVs. To me, these is like big black motherfucking school buses. So these big black ass school buses is riding around making 500 bucks a trip to take a carload of motherfuckers, 500 bucks. My shit for four people packing my shit. I get $3.99. That's a big fucking difference. <laughs> It's like Uber going to send me four motherfuckers to pack my shit to capacity and I'm getting three dollars and ninety nine cent. But you go to this big black ass SUV with two more people and you getting like two hundred, three hundred. Man, fuck that. <laughs> it's like from four dollars to three hundred. Shit, that's two hundred ninety six dollars. I'm missing out on per ride per fucking ride. And they having a blast. They in luxury. They having fun. And that's why I don't get it, man. A lot of these people, you know, I see them leaving events like Uber tried to get me to do a ride for like downtown. It was at a country concert for like three dollars and ninety six cents. I came up the hill, saw all the traffic, canceled the shit and went to the left, got out of there. But the fact that they sent me there for like three dollars and some fucking change, knowing it was a big ass event, black SUVs all lined up. Each one of those motherfuckers is going minimum, minimum, probably one hundred and fifty bucks. Minimum, they moving for one hundred and fifty. I'm three dollars and some fucking change. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, y'all, y'all fucking mind. Cancel. Sorry, lady. I'm out of here. Because I'm not going to let them play me like that. I'm not. We got to stop that shit. And these high AR motherfuckers, man, we got to. They need to stop that. They need to just stop. Because they're the ones watering down the system, allowing Uber to make us think, oh, yeah, we gonna we could use all these drivers for $3.99, throw four people in a fucking car. But if you get a fifth person, one more extra person, you got to go to an Uber like XL. And that driver's not going to get no $4. That driver's getting 24 for the same little two-mile fucking trip. So I'm like, hold the fuck up, man. This is nuts. This So I'm getting $4 for four, but he adds five and he gets $24 for his ride? Yup, yup. This shit don't make no... That's why I'm like, man, what up, E-Love? That's why I'm like, they need to pay us per passenger. Because this whole, you know, one passenger pays and everybody get on. Try that shit with a fucking bus. Try that with an airplane. Well, I just bought my ticket at American Airlines. So I'm going to take three of my friends with me. The flight attendant will be like, "They y'all all need tickets. Yeah, This is a flight. You all need tickets. You can't just pay for yourself and bring your fucking friends with you. Well, we do that shit in Uber. But that's because them drivers are stupid. <laughs> it's like, we get played all the fucking time for that shit. Somebody pays one price to get in. Or we get one. We don't know what they pay in Uber, but we know they pay and we only get paid for one person. And I'm like, no, nah, fuck that. I'm out. I'm out. Get out my car. Get out my car. <laughs> what Riviera Carlos said, just finished my night and charging Uber throws a surge in the area 15 miles away from me. That was in not too long ago. Check passenger app. No surge pricing. Fake surge to manipulate my behavior. See, and I keep saying I forget to do that shit, man. I keep forgetting to put because that's how they got me that night. They, they had me go way the fuck over there, took the surge away. So I was like, fuck it. I cleaned the car out, left. As soon as I left, they threw up a $30 surge where I was. I was like, them raggedy motherfuckers. I was so mad. I ain't even turn around. I ain't even, because I'm like, I'm not doing that shit. They be doing that to us, man. Man, man. Hey, 504 Doc, you get it, man. You get it, man. I'm like, dude, kick all these bullshit rides out. Do not be taking this shit. Like, make if they want to take four people, make them motherfucker upgrade to an XL. Because I'm like, I don't know, well, you could take four. Yeah, for $3.99, I'm not taking four, go to an XL. But your car says four, go to an XL. I'm not taking no four fucking people for $3.99 when you can go to an XL and you pay like a little bit more. But that driver, that driver gets $24.99. His family eats good. His family eats good off of one extra person getting in. But we, the X drivers, we eat like shit because we're allowing these motherfuckers to pack our cars for four bucks. It's like, no, take care of that family by kicking all these motherfuckers out. Like, nope, we're not doing $3.99. Nope, not doing it. Not doing it. Well, I got four. Nope, not doing it. I got only got four. Nope, not doing it. Get an XL. And that's how you change the behavior of these apps. When these apps start seeing a lot of X drivers kicking out four riders at a time, they're going to let them say, okay, so they're forcing them they're forcing us to pay xl drivers they're forced that we're forcing the apps uber and lyft to pay xl drivers because we ain't taking that shit we're not fucking our cars up for four dollars pay that driver 24 fuck his car up pay him 24 man we got to keep paying all these drivers 24 bucks a piece yep because <laughs> you ain't fucking mine up for four dollars it ain't happening it ain't happening and that's how we end up we take charge of the apps 
we start taking care of the upper platform drivers. All of us X drivers, we just don't let a lot of shit fly no more. If they want to play me like that, you know what? I'd rather you pay that driver 24 and I'd rather just decline the ride and take my ass somewhere else to get one passenger. Get me one passenger that's going like six miles, $23. Yeah, yeah, that's right, man. Call it a night first. Yeah. What is it? I remember when a surge was indicated actual demand. Now it's used just barely out of reach areas to move around drivers. Can't phase me. I see you, Uber. I see you, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's why I use that clip all the time. When I was watching that movie, that lady said that shit, I die laughing. Because that's how I feel about Uber. I'm like, I see you motherfuckers. Y'all out here trying to play us. I see you motherfuckers. And it's real shit, though. Because when whenever I end a ride, ain't it ironic on my videos, every time I end a ride, the surge never goes across the whole map. It stops and creates two bubbles, and it puts me dead center on the bubble. So no matter which way I go, I have to drive a distance to get to the surge. It's not about them. They can have that shit go all the way across. I could be in the surge. They'll put me right on the edge of the surge. Dude, it's a game, man. I'm telling you, this shit's a game. It's all a game. And it's the gamification of these apps to make us think that they could just take advantage of us. When really we're seeing how the shit's working out and we're now taking advantage of them. Now we're saying, you know what? My AR going to go to the fucking floor tonight because I know it's good money out there and I'm getting this good money. I would like to get $20 for a four or five mile ride because I know it's out there. And the apps are going to send you bullshit. Hey, man, here's a 16-mile ride for $13.50. Nope. 19-mile ride for $18. Nope. Six-mile ride, $13. I'll take it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, but dude, you could have got $18. Why you take 13? Well, the 13 is for six miles. The 18 is for 19 miles. I'm not doing that shit. No, no. And it's like, that's how you got to do it. You got to, yeah, be like, doubt it. Nope, not me. And we can keep taking these short rides, doing less, doing less, doing less. And we just stacking them profits. $2 a mile, $3 a mile. Because like I said, we got a whole year to do this shit. You fuck around, drive 35,000 miles last year. I mean, next year, 35,000 miles. And if you're going $5 a mile average because you took some really high shit, to some really high and then you've been taking everything two three dollars a mile but then you're taking 11 a mile you know 20 a mile for tips and shit like that Thirty five thousand miles at five dollars a mile that's one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a year one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a year because you averaged five dollars a mile and you drove thirty five thousand that's almost three thousand miles a month which is roughly about 700 800 miles a week which is in five days, about 125 miles a day. That's it. You drive 125 miles a day, go home, eat, drink your motherfucking juice, get on YouTube, fuck around with this shit, and you just made $175,000 because you ain't taking no dollar mile shit. You taking all two, three, five, nine, eleven dollars $11 a mile. Maybe like King James got a $43 mile ride because he had a $40 surge from the airport, took the $40 surge and used that shit on a short ride he was getting $43 a mile. I was like, dude, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, I caught that surge, man. <laughs> and it's like, if you averaging $5 a mile and you only driving 35,000 miles a year, you $175,000 a year driver. That's why I told people earlier in, in the other one, $100,000 a year is very doable in certain markets. It is nothing. $100,000 a year is nothing. And I think that's why a lot of people in corporate, people with degrees, people had to work their way up the fucking food chain and shit like that, making $95,000 a year, watching drivers making 150000 a year. Like, dude, this driver is 28 years old. This motherfucker's making 150000 a year. I'm 45, making 90000 a year. What am I doing wrong? Well, for one, your ass is working for corporate. That's where you're really fucked up. You're working for corporate. So you got a cap on your shit. Now, a driver... 25-year-old driver, 26-year-old driver, this motherfucker ain't got number energy, air, and opportunity. He finna eat these motherfucking streets up. <laughs> like, shit. These 25-year-old drivers, 26, 27, these motherfuckers, let them do this shit. Just let them. Let them all do it. 10, 15 years this way. They're millionaires. In 10 years at $100,000, you technically, you're a millionaire. If you're making $175,000 a year doing it the smart way, in 10 years, you got $1.7 million fucking dollars. Ain't nobody spending $1.7 million in 10 years. There's no way I can even spend a million in 10 years. It probably even a way I could spend, you know, $500,000 in 10 years. That's a lot of fucking money to spend in 10 years. 
So if you banking $1.75 million in 10 years because you was 25, now you 36 and you only been doing nothing but fucking high dollar to mile rides. That's all you ever been doing. You ain't been fucking with none of these dollar mile shits. You're a millionaire fucking driver. You 36 years old. You walk away from the fucking game. Everything paid off. You got a fleet of cars outside. You got people renting cars and shit from you. Man, how old are you? 36? Averaging about 2 million a year now. How you have it? Because I rent all these fucking cars out. I used to be a driver. And that's why these motherfuckers in corporate hate the young generation now. They hate it because they know y'all own y'all fucking grind and y'all ain't got shit but time. That's it. If you, you, and you get with a, a cat that knows how to fucking operate finances and money, you go find a financial advisor, some shit like that. Y'all ain't gonna need no fucking jobs. Corporate America, W-2s, all these motherfuckers are gonna be like, well, we can't hire nobody. Why not? Because all these motherfuckers are making way too much money to come work for us. We offered them $17.50 an hour. Motherfucker laughed at me. He laughed at me and took a goddamn crust ass donut off the counter in an employee room. And he ain't even no fucking employee. And he took an employee donut and walked the fuck out laughing after the interview. He's <laughs> like, sir, you, you're not an employee. We didn't hire you. Put that donut back. Fuck you, you crusty, dusty motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, hell yeah. It's like, man, it's like, he's a see all day. This is old. Uber was mad at me yesterday because they tried that surge crap on me. Caught him slipping and got me $18 surge. Trapped him into pinging me into a one mile total trip. $22. That's what I'm saying, Carlos. Get they ass. Get them. Get them. You know how this shit works. And you know what? A high AR driver will be sitting on an $18 surge and probably get a ride, like a 20 mile ride, and end up getting like $23 total. Like that time the motherfucker Uber gave me that $13 surge. Remember I had that $13 before I knew shit. Before a motherfucker educated me after that video, I had a $13 surge. I chased that motherfucker down, caught that shit. They sent me a 23-mile ride for $24, and I had a $13 surge on that shit. I was so mad, I turned the app off. I didn't have to do that because the motherfucker saw me do that and was like, Jeff, you could have kept your $13. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. I'm like, motherfucker, I was mad. I, what are you talking about? You could have kept that. Uh, what are you doing? Hey, Harriet Tubman, motherfucker, let me talk to you the back backwoods. Come on, let's go. Shit. That motherfucker Harriet Tubman, me so goddamn quick. I was like, so I could have kept the 13. Yup, yup. <laughs> I was like, mother. And I, I caught that 13 and they sent me 23 miles for $24. I was heated. Heated. Because that means 23 miles, they were willing to give me $10 worth of fare. $10 worth of fare on a 23-mile ride is less than 50 cents a mile, less than, they were paying me what, I think it was close to about 40 cents a mile, no, it was like not even 30 cents, something like that, it was way low, because it was 23 miles for $24, but I had the $13 surge on there, so they were paying something like $14, it was something weird, $11, it was $11, so it came out to almost 50 cents a mile, hey Silver Fox said, I tested the other day, it works, man, Motherfuckers done created a monster, man. When they told me that shit, I've been doing this shit for years. I mean, one thing with the reservations, with the reservations and, and somehow before your reservation map locks you in, but you catch a, a surge somewhere before that map locks you, that surge is yours. Before I found that out, man, do you know how many times I've been doing morning appointments? I've had surges, $7.50, $8, and as soon as the reservation map engages, I lose the surge and everything. And then I do the ride and it's like $22. So $22 will come up instead of $32. You know how many times that shit has happened to me and nobody ever told me nothing? That's why I love this channel. Drivers on this channel know shit. Not only do they know shit, but they share shit. They say, Jeff, you fucked up. You could have got your money for this. You fucked up. You could have got your money for that. And I'm like, what do you mean? Harriet Tubman, motherfucker. Talk to me. In, in the, on, email me real quick, man. Harriet Tubman, email me. I'm like, all right, bet, bet. <laughs> and it's like, people tell you, this channel is not about people bragging about shit, but about people knowing that we could run this industry so much better than how they're running us. They're running us into the fucking ground and people are seeing it. And I'm glad that I got the video because a lot of times people do screenshots or people do videos where they just talk about the market. We, we show our whole motherfucking day. I'm showing myself chasing down surge, picking up people, dropping people off. I'm doing everything I can do to give people the full gamut of what it feels like to drive rideshare, the decisions I make, the times I get pissed off, the me wiping my car down, 
Me going to fucking buy some goddamn donuts and shit. Me taking a fucking break for a minute. Me just being done. I'm going to listen to some music for a minute. I hit you motherfuckers back. I need some music. And it's the full gamut of what we do. Woo, what Tony said, 567 for the day. 1800 for the weekend. Haven't even hit my 500 day weekend days. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're at $1,800 for the week and you haven't even done. Dude, that would be 38. Wait a minute. $1,000. $2,800. Almost three G's. Almost three G's. That's crazy. Crazy. Look at that. $25 service. One to five. In a, man. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, Tony, man. Some people don't get it. These I, I start at 4 30 in the morning and I drive till midnight. I drive about 600 miles a day and I make 500 bucks a day. They don't shit. Fuck that. Fuck that. There's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. And when people sit and we talk about it and we show people exactly how we should be treating these apps because these apps, they'll shit on you. They'll send you a whole bunch of uh, whack shit. They'll send you a bunch. Of, and if you take that whack shit, they gonna keep sending you whack shit. Guarantee, Tony, what's your AR? What's your AR, Tony? I ain't even gonna say shit about your AR. I just want to know what your AR is. Motherfucker be like 100%. <laughs> Actually, 99 because I declined a donut run. <laughs> what's your AR, Tony? I got to know this shit. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The man. You you running about what I'm running on AR, but I ain't making no money like that. Fuck that shit. Man, man, man. That means you take one out of every four rides. One out of every four rides, and this motherfucker finna hit three Gs. If people keep telling me in these goddamn comments on these ragged-ass fucking channels, oh, the lower your AR, you ain't gonna be able to make no money. They're gonna stop sending you rides. They're gonna throttle you down. You ain't gonna make no money. Your AR is too low. You're not gonna make any money. Okay, okay. I, that's why I tell motherfuckers in my videos, watch who you listen to. Watch who you listen. I'd rather listen to fucking Tony because this motherfucker, if he's banking 1800 and he ain't even hit the weekend yet, plus he's sending a 23% AR, this is probably somebody I should be listening to. I'm not listening to nobody that's working 80, 90 hours a fucking week. AR is 89%. And these motherfuckers like, man, I'm about to hit two Gs with this last ride. <laughs> it's like, Motherfucker, you just work seven days straight. You just hitting two Gs? Shit. <laughs> Carlos said, I'm 11% on Uber, 1% on Lyft. No joke, man. Real shit, man. <laughs> man, 1% on Lyft. That means one out of 100 rides on Lyft is worth your fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> it's got 99 riders but a bitch ain't one motherfucker instead of 99 problems this motherfucker left 99 riders on the curb 99 lift riders on the wall 99 lift riders take one down pass it around 98 riders will lift on the wall <laughs> this motherfucker left 99 people on the corner shit we need to make a fucking shirt 99 riders on the corner Fuck, instead of barriers on the wall, 99 lift riders standing on the curb. Take one down, passing around. 98 riders standing on the curb. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker ain't picking up nobody. You, you like the motherfucker ice cream truck. You got all fucking people chasing your car down the street. Please, please. 99 riders for lift on the curb. 99 riders for lift. <laughs> That's fucked up. I do not believe you said you're one percent on lift. <laughs> That's crazy shit, man. You left ninety nine motherfuckers on the curb. That's fucked up. Hey, hey, Jamil. That's funny shit. Fucking Tony be like, I'm ninety nine. Like fuck that shit, man. Lift is bank when you're a filter your street bonus. Yeah, that's the thing. Lift, lift is different in Uber, man. Lift is different because you know, and a lot of people always say, well, what's better, Lyft or Uber? And I like some lady asked me that the other day in the comments. Said, well, which is better, Lyft or Uber? I'm like, well, that's a loaded question because it's different markets, different times, different programs. They run it at different times. Uber might not be good for right now if Uber is sending me just regular shit and Lyft got a street going by ASU and I pick up, you know, $12 for this. I mean, you just lock that shit in. $99. Doubters. Doubt it. <laughs> what up, Borden AZ? What's good? What's good? You said Flame said 99 doubters. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker be like doubt it doubt it doubt it doubt it doubt it. <laughs> all these motherfuckers i doubt them all 
instead of fuck them all, doubt them all, doubt them all, doubt it, doubt it, doubt it. <laughs> Man, what? Born AZ, what are you talking about? What are you? I think I'm done. I almost got stabbed today. What are you talking about? That's crazy. What are you talking about? Like, were you on a, a delivery, a ride? Was it some shady shit going down? A domestic you showed up to? That's fucking crazy. And see, and I talked about that shit earlier, saying how come we don't give drivers ten thousand dollars when shit like that happened to them? Drivers should be getting ten ten grand. Instead, they'll give the rider. Yeah, this rider. Uh, this driver cussed me out. Lip will be like, well, I'm going to give you $10,000 and not to settle out of court. But yet drivers shit happen to drivers. These apps never be like, well, let me give you $10,000, you know, just for your nerves and shit like that. Take some time off. These motherfuckers don't care. They don't care. Oh man, that's crazy. That is crazy. Silver Fox, I done shot him. Shit, I'm about to, I'm about to fucking put some ejected seats in my goddamn car. I'll shoot those motherfuckers through my roof. Fucking knock their ass out cold. They be like, bam, hit their head on the fucking thing to knock them out cold. Fuck them. They be like, Jeff, why you got this big ass hump in your trunk in the in your roof in the back? What happened? Oh, that's last motherfucking customer before you was talking shit. I hit the button. Motherfucker head almost went to the goddamn roof. <laughs> Landed in a seat, knocked out cold. Muhammad says 3%. I think on Lyft, I gotta be at least in my 20s. I because Lyft, you gotta go through a weird ass screen to get to us. So I never even look at Lyft. I have no idea what the fuck I am on Lyft. But I got to go find I got to go through these screens and shit and find out. Uber shows you right on the screen all the time. That's the only way I see it. But I don't give a fuck about no AR. It's like the lower it is, the more critical of a driver you are, which means you're really in charge of your shit. You know what you're doing. And a lot of people, 80 percent, 85, 90 percent. And these motherfuckers, I'd be sitting on channels. Oh, man, I'm 95 percent. Yeah. I can't believe I'm still 95 percent. I'm, I'm working on my way to 100. I'm getting 100 next fucking week. I'm going back to a W-2. I can't afford this shit no more <laughs> the very next week. <laughs> it's like, well, it's not that you need to go back to a W-2. You need to tank your motherfucking AR a little bit. You kind of doing some dumb shit over there. <laughs> exactly. Like fucking A-plus through this. I did extra credit. <laughs> I got 101% on Uber. How the fuck you get 101% on Uber? I was at 100% and I took a real shitty ride. They put me over the board. <laughs> it's like, okay. That was a 25 cents a mile ride. They put me at 101%. <laughs> no, uh fuck that shit. Wait, picked up a passenger guy showed up in a Wendy's workout fit smelling like pot. I started the ride. We were almost there. He has a stop, says if he got his phone charger, needs to go back to his apartment. Comes back out the apartment. I see him stuffing a knife in his backpack. Damn, so I took off. Well, he's probably putting a knife in his backpack because he work at Wendy's. This motherfucker gotta go cut some lettuce. It's like shit. All to see your AR on lift, you gotta go to that. Um, you gotta touch your name, and then it says, "Wait, well, you touch your name, and it tells you what tier you on." It'll say no tier. It'll just say like a percent in the middle, like your driving score. Then you, when you go to that new screen, you gotta hit driving score, and it'll open it, and it'll tell you what your driving score is, all the service flags, all that shit. So you gotta touch your your picture first, and this big screen will open up. And on that big screen, it'll say driving score somewhere in there and hit that shit. Man. Yeah, bored and lazy. I don't know. Like if he was coming out with a knife and he worked at a restaurant, I don't know. That's like saying, I picked up this motherfucking janitor and he was going to hit me with a broom. This motherfucker came out the house with a broom. What else? Kind of like his job. He had to go get his broom for work. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, but if he did have a knife in his backpack, I'm going to tell you right now. I know I've taken people who have had weapons. I know that already. Trust me, I know it. And that shit don't bother me. It don't phase me. Like some of you might be like, oh, I live in Arizona for one thing. Arizona's open carry. Just what it is. A lot of people carry. Everybody, that's why I tell motherfuckers, everybody with the gun is not a bad person. Everybody with one is not bad. But at the same rate, I don't trust everybody that has one. That's the, that's the flip side. I don't trust everybody that got one. So if I'm out, you know, doing something like I picked up security guards before for work and they all got their guns. You know, I pick them up for work. They'll be working at like the, the bus depot because they're security at the bus depot, security for companies and stuff like that. And they're armed. I mean, they come out and say, you see the gun holsters, you see all that shit. I picked up uh, retired police officers before. One retired police officer was actually a uh, police in Memphis, Tennessee. Back when I used to live in Memphis, Tennessee, I picked him up. 
And he had his gun on him when I picked him up. He came out the house, gun in a holster and everything. Regular dude with fucking jean shorts on, all that shit. And we just riding, talking, chatting and shit. And he's, yeah, I used to be a police officer in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I was like, dude, I used to live, I went to Frazier, West Side. He was like, oh shit. And we talked about the years and everything. So I don't know. I guess it's me. I, I grew up around people that hunted. Everybody I grew up with had rifles and shit. My grandpa had rifles. All my cousin had rifles. My old roommate, Chad Bishop, his dad, all them. They're the Iowa, uh, Richard Bishop. If you look him up, he's the Iowa chief of wildlife at the Department of Natural Resources. Me and his son, Chad, were roommates. We're like best friends. Me and him, Pip, all of us. They were from Indianola, Iowa. These dudes didn't do shit but hunt. All they had were guns. They would give guns as gifts to people. They'd be like, hey, man, it's your birthday. Here's a big-ass rifle. And I'd never seen no shit like that. I was like, dude, you just gave a motherfucker a whole gun? Like, not just like a bullet or a picture of a gun? No, motherfucker, you get a whole gun. <laughs> it was like, shit. It says, yeah, true, but they were not high. Right, right. They wasn't high. Yep. You real shit, Borden AZ. And that's what fucks me up. Because we are an AZ, and we know that, that marijuana is legal out here. I don't see how employees would allow like they wouldn't allow me to come to work with alcohol on my breath if i show up at work with alcohol on my breath even if i went out the night before or something they probably be like jeff you'll be dealing with customers all day today you smell like you've been drinking all night go home and rest that shit off don't come to work drunk so if somebody's coming to work smelling like weed already i mean it's, it's weed is legal it's legal so is alcohol is legal but at some point you gotta say you smelling like the shit you doing so you got to take that shit back home. You got to sober up. You got to come back, you know, not smelling like that. You got to shower. You know, you got to let the smell wear off something. I don't know. Because if somebody show up to work smelling like alcohol, whether it was a police officer smell, police could be like, well, I, I was drinking off duty. I drank yesterday. I worked today, but I was drinking yesterday. Well, you still smell like alcohol when you speaking to me, man. I can smell alcohol on your breath. You would tell the officer, or you, I need to speak to your sergeant. Hey, this officer is here. He smells like alcohol, man. He's talking to me, trying to give me a ticket, but he smells like he's drunk. Same shit with weed. If you smell somebody that smells like weed, even if they did the shit yesterday or the day before, it's not conducive for business. You cannot have somebody smelling like drugs or alcohol conducting business. That shit, to me, is just not right. I get a motherfucker a day off. I'm like, do you need the day off? Why? Because you smell like weed. Oh, man, I smoked yesterday. Well, you still smell like weed today. It's like, did you shower? If you didn't shower, go the fuck home, take a shower, and come back. My Uber already left. Then call another one, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to tell you. Shit, but you ain't going to be here smelling like weed, walking around customers and shit smelling like weed. This is a place of business, not recreation, motherfucker. I can see if we worked at a, a dispensary. That's one thing. If we work at a dispensary, come smelling like weed all you fucking want. We work at a bar. Come smell like alcohol all you want because you probably, they think, oh, well, you probably had a shot on break. Cool. But if you're working in a place where th they don't sell alcohol and they don't sell weed, but that's what you smell like, we need to have a conversation. Motherfucker, Harriet Tubman, motherfucker. <laughs> man, man. He said, I take people to work all the time reeking of weed. I, I couldn't get it. I couldn't do it. Like, what up, Dad Dash in the building? Dad Dash. Is I got a plan if something goes down, they better have their seatbelt on because I'm flipping the car. <laughs> Jesse's stupid. Jesse said, I'm flipping the car. That's funny. <laughs> Jesse flipped the car. He found out the motherfucker be like, no, it was it was my brand new set of butter knives. I wasn't going to stab you, Jesse. This is my new set of butter knives I just bought for a housewarming gift. Motherfucker, Jesse don't flip the motherfucking car. <laughs> Man, I thought you was going to stab me, dog. I don't trust you, motherfucker. I don't know you. No, it's I'm going to a housewarming party. This was a set of butter knives that they needed for their, you know, motherfucker. Just fuck that. I'm flipping the car. I saw some gleam in the fucking rear view. All I saw was ching ching. Motherfucker flips. <laughs> Jesse, why you flip the car? Man, this motherfucker's gonna stab me, dude. He's on his way to a housewarming party. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> just like, oh my bad, my bad. I guess I should probably hit in in ride. <laughs> No, motherfucker, don't hit N ride. Just walk his ass there. Get paid for the walk. Fuck it. <laughs> Jesse don't you know, flip the motherfucker. He worried about hitting N ride. Should I should I just end the ride though? Should I cancel it or should I end it? <laughs> motherfucker, you don't know, flip your car. It don't make a difference. <laughs> you gonna you gonna still tip me? You gonna give me a one star, a two star? Motherfucker, Jesse, you don't flip the car on this fucking man. He's probably gonna one star. <laughs> oh man. 
Hey, this is the bright side. I picked up a stuffy rich old lady neck. She smelled the weed. Thought I'd get a com complaint. I got a $3 tip instead. Hey, real shit. And bored and lazy, that's what I do. Um, You got to get these things like this. Like I said, I use these all the time. These little bitty Glade things. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah, like these little Glade sprayers like this. I got one that's pet scent. It's for pet odor. Because like I said, I got dogs. And I would use it once you just... It hits like it's made for those machines, but you can spray it by yourself like this. Just hit it like that. This shit lingers in your car for eternity. And the pet one off. Oh, I use it in the house. I think the pet one is the best scent they got. They just need to take pet off and just put the best scent ever. That's it. Because when it says pet on it, people don't buy it because they go, well, I don't have any pets. Trust me. The pet scent is the best scent they got out of all of them. You can get Hawaiian, fucking fresh linen, whatever you want. The one that says pet odor is the best one. That's the ones I keep in my cars. And I use the regular ones in the house. Because <laughs> I love that pet one, boy. It's like, and people get in my car, they go, what is that smell? It smells like a, like a hotel in here. It smells really fresh in here. It smells really good. I'm like, oh, that's my air spray. What scent is that? It's pet. They be like, oh, I'm like, don't worry. It's not because y'all smell like dogs and shit like that. It's like, I bought it because I do have dogs. And I loved it so much and it smelled so fresh that I started using it in my cars. And I'm like, man, this shit is amazing. What the hell? And it's the great value, the, the Walmart great value pet odor eliminator one. That one and the little bitty baby cans like this, psh, trust me, you hit that shit two or three times, it's a wrap. You're going to get a tip every time. People jump in, oh my God, it smells so good in here. What the hell does that smell? It smells great because nobody's ever smelled it. They're used to smelling flavors like fucking lavender, fucking blueberries and shit like that. But it's like, no, pet odor eliminator. It is the freshest, cleanest, excuse me, most innocent smell. It, it is like, it's like walking into like something, like a garden. It, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it's, it's weight and it mixes with anything. So even if you've got, let's say, cologne on a perfume on, it doesn't, it's not overbearing to where it'll it'll mix with your cologne or your perfume and be too harsh. Because like the per like this, this right here is aqua waves. Aqua waves is over. Like I spray it, I can smell a shit for the next two fucking. It's very overbearing. Like you don't smell anything but this. With the pet odor eliminator, you can still kind of smell your perfume, your cologne. You can still kind of smell the clean leather seats and everything. It's not overbearing. It is just very, very fresh. It's like I said, it's hard to explain. If I spray that shit in the car, it's gonna smell like I got a fucking a bouquet of roses sitting in the back seat. Motherfucker be like, who got somebody leave some flowers in this motherfucker? Like, nah, man, I hit this spray. But with that, then they'd be like, damn, it smells good in here. Ooh, what's that smell, man? It's good. Easy. It's all the leather seats. It's my floors are clean. My floors are wiped down with leather cleaner. My cologne's on. Somebody probably got out the hair perfume on. Plus, I hit that little pet spray thing. And it's like, it just it's like icing on a fucking cake. It's like crusty on the fucking dusty. <laughs> hey, that's crusty on my dusty. <laughs> that's what we need to call it. Get a flavor and call that shit crusty on my dusty. <laughs> what is that smell? Oh, bitch, that's crusty on my dusty. <laughs> I'm going to fucking make a can of that shit and put it in my car. But hey, where you going? It's crusty on my dusty. God damn it. Shit. You like that? Nope, you just land down over there. Man, I'm telling you, it's like, man, it's icing on the cake. That that pet fresh shit is icing on the cake. Shit's crusty on the dusty. Shit, I'm telling you, if y'all go to Walmart, get, and it comes in double packs. I always buy the double pack. Man, this is a JB crusty donut there. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, y'all gonna have people tripping up. They're gonna be like asking y'all, what is that? I had one girl take a picture of the can. She was like, can I take a picture of that? I was like, cool. It was a whole group of them. I was like, she took a picture of that shit. And I be telling the young college kids, you know these dudes, they ain't got no fucking game. They, they, the game of the new kids is not like game. When we was little, we had real game. The game of the new age kids be like, oh, girl, shit, I got 15,000 IG followers. What's up? That's their game. I'm like, okay, so you got 15,000 motherfuckers watching a train wreck. Fine, cool. But see, back in my day, we didn't have Instagram and all that shit. So you had to have, you know, come to the house, you have ambiance. You walk in, you got pillows on the couch. You got, like, lights up under the cabinet so the lights look cool and shit like that. Now, 
I tell them, make sure you get some pet fresh, pet odor eliminator in your house and get one of those little auto sprayers hanging on the wall by your uh, air return in your house. So when it sprays out, it sprays and it goes up into the air return and it radiates through all the vents in your house. So every room smells like it because you've got the, the thing right next to your air return. So it goes, it sucks up in there and it goes out to all the whole house. So your entire house smells just like that. I'll be trying to hit them kids up on game. They be trying to invite little girls over and shit like that. I'm like, you can't have no girl over going. And that was the night I was laughing with her. Can't be like, yeah, girl, I got these Groupons, girl. I got these motherfucking Groupons for sushi. We can go get sushi. Buy one, get one free. I got you. What's good? I got 15,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> we can show them how we doing it. <laughs> so I had the Playboy shoes. I don't know with the little bunny on the motherfuckers. Hell yeah. Born and that might be going to Phoenix tomorrow afternoon to try this Fetch app. Try that, the Fetch. Yeah, man. And I swear, it's like, I be trying to educate. And that's why these kids love riding with me, man. I talk to these motherfuckers like they my kids. And even the girls, I be talking to them too. I be telling these little girls, I'm like, listen, it's, it's going to be fun out, hanging fun, having fun with these people on clubs, doing all this shit. Do not accept a drink from somebody just because it's free. I tell these little girls that shit all the fucking time. Don't it? It's like, you hang with your girl, stay with your girls. If she go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom. It's like, it ain't because you got to watch her piss. It's because that's your safety and your security. I said, because people going to try to offer you drinks, buy you drinks. Oh, I'll take care of you. What are you drinking? I got you. If you're not standing right next to somebody when they buy you a drink, don't accept that drink. You don't know that shit. The bartender makes it. You need to see it being made right there in real time. Don't ever let nobody bring you no drink from somewhere else. Don't do that. And I talk to these girls like they my damn daughters and shit. I try to hook, help them on game. And it's like, because a lot of times... People ain't trying to do something to you. They might not want to try to do something. What they might be trying to do is they see if what they have works. It might be some pills they bought off somebody else. And they might be like, man, look, I don't know if these pills work or not. I don't know if they work. I will put some in her drink. We'll be hanging with them all night. See how she feels. And next thing you know, they don't put some shit in this girl's fucking drink to see how it affects her because they don't want to take the shit first. And nobody wants to guinea pig the shit. So they put it in this girl's fucking drink. And next thing you know, she like can't keep her eyes open. It's like, don't take drinks from no fucking body. You don't know these people. It's like, buy your own shit or come with friends. Drink before the fucking shit start. Miss Melody, check check out my Melody Melody. That's my old Eric Ben Rakim. Check out my Melody Melody. What up, Mel? How you doing? It's the evening. It's 8.50 tonight. Hey, we having a good time just hanging out. You know, I tell my fuckers, this is like ride share barbecue, the ride share card game, dominoes, whatever. <laughs> We be in there just talking about everything under the sun, having a good time. Flav, that's right. You got to spit the game. And I, and I try to educate these kids, man. I try to help them up on real life. Because a lot of them, you know, and, and especially the young brothers and young sisters out there. Because I know a lot of them. And, and I'm not just bullshitting people. And even like some of the young men I talk to, some of the young white kids and stuff like that. You know, Mexican kids. A lot of them come from homes where, you know, they don't have dads. The mom raised them. The mom got them this far through life. And they never got the male aspect of life. So they don't really get how men really think. And so when they ride around with us, they get a true gist of how a male my age would think. One kid I was talking about gaming and stuff like that. And I was like, well, my son's a gamer, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm telling them how, you know, gamers are going to be the wave of the future. Gamers will be the ones that will become the millionaires because gamers stream them playing games. And instead of people going to the arcades to watch people play, people are now sitting in their houses looking on the computer, watching people play. So instead of going to the arcade and watching people play, you're sitting in your house watching people play. Advertisers know this. So advertisers are playing this gamer. Advertisers say, we'll pay you to play your video game online to keep people watching your video game. And so while they're watching this video game, there's ads running across the bottom. There's banners on the bottom, banners down the side. And so this little kid is slowly getting rich, just playing his video games. He downloads you know, $1,000, $2,000 a month just playing video games and shit. Gamers are the wave of the future. And I told him I would never stop my son from playing a game because I believe my son can take care of himself playing a video game. He could take care of probably me playing a video game. And the kid was like, man, I wish my dad thought that. He hates video games. I'm like, because we're old school. We think of shit like welding. I'm like, I could teach my son how to weld. That's cool. I could teach him how to weld. But then he will live the lifestyle I live. I want my kid to live an advanced life. I want him to live a level above me. If I teach him everything I know and only that, and I don't allow him to experience life on his own, doing his own fucking thing, he's going to end up just like me. That's it. I might not want him to end up just like me. 
I want him to end up better than me. So he's got to experience the better things in life, the different things in life, the new technological things in life. Because of that kid, I got a fucking YouTube. I don't do fucking YouTube. He the one who told me to do the shit. Dad, you should do a YouTube. <laughs> and he was like, what, 12, 10, 12 at the time he told me that shit. I was like, all right, whatever, man, whatever. Because I listen to the youth. I listen to the kids. Because I think intelligence is evolving. Intelligence is evolutionary. Intelligence is not only in old people. Intelligence comes from experience. It comes from what you witness. It comes from a lot. So when you don't listen to a kid, you're blocking out intelligence. When you don't listen to women, you know, passengers, I, that's why this whole women choose woman shit is a bunch of bullshit. Because I think women riding with men, we're sharing different levels of intelligence, different levels of, of how the world really works, different viewpoints. And once you block out those viewpoints, you don't let men talk to women that often or women talk to men or this and that. We don't talk to gays. Gays don't talk to heterosexuals. We never have a comprehension. We're missing a huge fucking a link. A link is missing. And when we allow corporations and politics to put something between us, now I can't talk to gays because gays are now choosing women to ride with or gays are choosing gays to ride with. Gays don't want a heterosexual man because they're scared of me because the app said, hey, men are fucking dangerous. Don't ride with that motherfucker. Exactly, Flav. That's what I say. Thank God for him, man. And he's one of those kids that a lot of parents don't listen to their kids because a lot of parents be like, man, I already know everything. I don't need you. I know everything. I don't know everything. I know I don't know everything. And that's what kind of makes me a little, you know, willing to listen to other ideas, even kids ideas. I even listen to kids. And he was like, Dad, you always repairing cars and stuff all the time. You be doing ride share and stuff. You should do like a YouTube channel. I was like, man, I remember I had like, you know, eight subscribers, hundred subscribers. Then it was like, oh shit, 200. Oh shit. When I hit a thousand, I was like, holy shit, this is actually like a real, like actual channel. <laughs> and this kid is the one who said I should do it. This wasn't my idea. Oh, nice Jay. There you go. But getting out there, getting that money, getting that money. And that was all his idea. And I'm and I'm one of those people that be like, you know what? I don't mind listening to a different realm of intelligence, because if you think of how how civilization has went, if you look at Elon Musk, Elon Musk is probably more intelligent than people were 100 years ago. He's more intelligent than people were 200 years ago. Even people who we see like in everyday average life were probably more intelligent than people that were 300, 400 years ago. So that means intelligence evolves intelligence evolved so therefore if you don't talk to kids you're missing the evolution of intelligence unless you talk to younger people unless you talk to people who are nothing like you if you take a computer and you say in my computer the only thing i want in my computer are the programs i put in my computer your computer is static be a lot download new programs go talk to somebody who's nothing like you that way you download their program now now you're learning what they know a totally something way different from what you'd ever fucking even think of because your computer ain't set up like that. I listen to people talk about garden. I took plant growth to development. I took botany. There's a lady in Arizona who she wrote a book on how to grow plants in the desert, different plants in the desert. So I sit there and I listen to people like that because they're nothing like me. So I'm expanding my computer. Carlos said, I'm doing a ride listening to Jeff on my AirPod while Spotify on my car playing music for my passenger. Hey, tell your pastor, say, hey, Jeff said, what's up? <laughs> they be like, who's Jeff? <laughs> we finna head to his crib right now, man. He having a big ass pool party. <laughs> Motherfucker, drop me off at this quick trip. I'm not going to go see Jeff. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but and that's why I tell people, you know, intelligence is evolutionary. And if we don't sit and allow ourselves to evolve, even with ride share, how a lot of the people, the older people in ride share, oh, we used to do this and we do that. And we do is ride share has evolved mentally, physically. You're still using a car. You're using an app. You're picking up fucking people. But intelligence wise, the intellectual aspect of ride share, it's evolved. We have people making way more money now doing less work than back then. Back then, you used to do work and you would get paid. And then all of a sudden, Russia started going down. You had to do war, work double time, triple time, all this crazy time to work. And then the evolution of, of thought started coming. Now we're thinking of profits and when we're thinking of different things, we're running this shit like a real business. We're evolving as drivers. A lot of the older drivers may not understand us, just like a lot of older people may not understand the youth. Because we'll, they, it's a bridge that they don't want to cross. It's a bridge of intellect that they don't want to cross because they're stuck in old school ways. They're stuck in old school thinking. 
But if you tell them, hey, stop working yourself to death. Stop driving nonstop. Stop worrying about 100% AR. Let's try this. No, you're stupid. You don't know how to do it. You're wasting time. You're sitting in that parking lot. You're not doing nothing. You're wasting tons of time. But in five hours, you crank, and, and that's five hours online and five hours online time. That's not even your drive time. That's just you being online because you've been scouting rides and shit. Five hours online, you've done what they did in nine hours of online. Exact same numbers. So you're driving less than the five hours. Five hours is your online time. You're probably driving about three, three and a half. And in three, three and a half hours, you're making almost $200, close to 200. And it's taking them nine hours to make that same amount because they're doing every fucking ride, doing it. The evolution has to happen. And if the evolution doesn't happen in ride share, they're going to stay stuck paying us shit fucking fares trying to get us to take these shitty ass rides and we ain't taking them. We've got to evolve as, as a new breed of driver. Even though some of us are older, we're walking with the younger ones now. We're walking with the ones who, hey, man, I just started ride, doing ride share three weeks ago. Juan Vargas started doing ride share five months ago. Juan Vargas has been doing ride share for five months. He's never developed a bad habit like we developed a bad habit. He used to have high AR. Back in 2020, I had high AR. 2021, I had high AR. That shit will never happen again. I had to break that habit because the evolution of thought started taking place. I started with a high AR. I had to work more and more and more and more, even with the high AR, to get what now I make with a low AR working less. The evolution. And a lot of the older cats, they don't want to listen to the younger ones. The young ladies out there saying, hey, this is how I do delivery. This is what I do. I go on Google. I do this. I do that. I look up high median income neighborhoods. I look the evolution of thought of these kids are teaching us. It's not just about walking out the door going, I got to stay busy. I got to stay busy. I need to work. I need to work. That's employee mentality. And a lot of us come from employee ma- employment background. I come from an employment background. Got to stay busy. When you walk through the office, always carry a folder because you got to look busy. If you're not carrying a folder, people think you're not doing nothing. Even if you're just going to the bathroom and back, just take a fucking folder. Look busy. Always look busy. It, it makes everybody want to stay busy and motivated. No, it makes you look fucking stupid after a certain time because you're carrying around these empty ass folders and shit. You're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Well, my boss told me I always carry a folder because I gotta look busy, make it like you're always doing something. We have that employee mentality. So now we're in ride share. We're shedding that employee mentality. The evolution of thought is occurring. We're becoming business minded. Even though a lot of people, you guys are stupid. You guys are no skill. You low skill. This ain't shit but ride share. You can't afford that. You can't do nothing. Yet. $1,800 in a week for Tony. And Tony still got two fucking days left. The weekend. $1,800 is what people make on the weekend. He made that shit during the week. And he still got two days left. And I'm like, the evolution of thought is occurring right in front of people's fucking faces. And they can't even see it because they, they don't want to see it. They don't want to see it. You're going to get deactivated for cherry picking. You're going to get deactivated. So I drop shit in, in my fucking videos. Hey, man, this is uber legal talking about it. This is Uber Chat talking about it. They're, they set up rides to make sure we do short rides. They want to equalize rides. So they say, hey, decline all the rides you want. Take only the ones that's right for you. They say that shit to you. You're going to de- be declined for that. I'll be declined quicker from somebody lying, saying, he said something to me in the car. Uber won't even investigate that shit. Deactivate. I'll try to get online to a ride. What the fuck? Passenger reported that you said something sideways to them in the car. Lying motherfucker. That's why we got to get dash cams. But that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> But for us to sit there and and watch the evolution of thought occur, to look at the younger generation, the 25 year old drivers who haven't really been in in the field of employment that long. If you're 25 years old, you've not been an employee your whole life. Me at 50, I've pretty much been an employee my whole life. So I need to now start looking at. All right, Lisa. Hey, get out there. Get out there. She's like, have a great night. Early catering order time for bed. There you go. Get out there and get that money. $75. $75. I, I call it 75 bucks. Get that order in the morning. Get that money going. I appreciate the super chat, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But yeah, it's like we've got to listen to the, the younger generation who haven't been employees that long. They're not trapped in that employee mentality. They're not so deeply indoctrinated that they don't think they can't make it unless they act like an employee. Some of us were so indoctrinated. Oh, I got to give me a second job. I got to give me a third job. I'm going to have to work at four different places next week. Why don't you just work for yourself? No, no, no. I need a job. I need a job. I need a job. Motherfucker, give me a job. Because we're indoctrinated to think we need to work for somebody. I'm going to make sure you get your degree, you get your diploma, so you can get a job. You can work for somebody, man. You can work for two people if you're really good. If you're really, really good, you can work for three jobs, man. You get three jobs. 
because we're indoctrinated to think we now here we are in ride share in the old school mindset of employees. They don't understand. How are you guys making it? How are you guys affording these cars? How are you keeping your bills paid? What the fuck are you guys doing? Y'all don't have no real job. This ain't a job. What the fuck? This ain't a job. No, it's not a job. This is about profit analysis. We're all analysts, business analysts. The moment a fucking transaction hits my phone, I'm a business analyst immediately. I'm analyzing that business. $22, six miles, I'll take it. $22, 32 miles, not. That's analysts. You're a business analyst now. So now you're using analytical skills, not just using employee skills of, I got to stay busy. They send a ride. Oh, I take that. Send a ride. Oh, I Did you even look at how far you're going? Don't have to. Got to take it. 100% AR. Bro, are you looking at these rides? I don't have to. It came to my phone. I took it. I'm busy. See you later. Motherfucker go 35 miles, get $16. Then look at it. I take that. Dude, that's $6 for like 13 miles. Doesn't matter. Got to stay busy. This that he's not a motherfucking business analyst. That's an employee-minded person who just can't fucking break that mold of, I need to learn how to analyze these transactions to get this fucking profit. We have a whole new evolution of drivers out there right now. A whole new evolution of drivers. And they're being more profitable. They're being smarter, more efficient, working less hours, driving less miles, saving the wear and tear on a vehicle. Doing a bunch of shit that the normal drivers are not doing. Normal drivers, they're trapped in that employee mindset. And then they're educating the youth. That are, that are not employees yet. Hey, make sure when you get in, you don't decline too much. You decline too much. You're going to get booted off this app and you want to be on this app. Don't decline too much. <laughs> the college dropout album. <laughs> One day. Exactly. And then you're going to get a better job. <laughs> exactly. All oh, my degrees keeps me warm. <laughs> My degrees keep me warm and I'm just fine, man. And then I get more college and then I get more college after more college. It's like, man, what the fuck? And we one of those people, you know, they, they're educating the youth to be more like them instead of think like, hey, man, this is not a job. This is not a job. What you're doing right now is not a job. You're going to be the secretary, secretary. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're going to get promoted. This is not a job. This is a business. It's a business. It's not a job. When motherfuckers say, hey, go get a real job. I say, why don't you mind your business? Because that's what we doing. We mind in our business. You got a job. We run a business. We're about profit margins. You don't have to worry about profit margins at your job. At your job, you have an accounting department that's doing profit margins. At your job, you got an HR fucking department. At your job, you got a compliance department. You have supervisors at your job. That's your job. You have a job. I have none of that shit doing ride share. I am the fucking job. This is a business. When I wake up, I have to analyze transactions. I got to go out and maintain my vehicle. I don't have an engineering department that can work on a company fucking trucks. That is the, the truck. I am the company. So I got to walk outside, check air pressure, Fucking pump brakes a couple of times. Look up under the car to make sure a brake line didn't rupture at night. I always do that shit. I get in my car, pump my brakes a few times sometimes just to get the hydraulic fluid going. Look up under the car. There's no spot under the car. So that means my brake lines, my wheel bearings didn't come apart. You know, everything's good. The one thing you don't want to do is to take off in your fucking car, pump the brakes and have no hydraulic pressure. You're like, what the fuck happened? It was a slow leak in your hydraulic system. You probably hit something in the road. It jumped off, clipped your motherfucking hydraulic pressure line or kinked the fucking line. A rock could have hit it. And now you have no hydraulic pressure. It was pressure a little bit when you was pulling out the driveway. But the moment you come to that stop sign, you cruise right through that motherfucker. Pedal all the way to the floor. What the fuck just happened? Shit happens. Shit happens. So we are the people who run the business. We are the business. <laughs> so the CEO, the manager, the assistant manager, the mechanic, the driver, man, I'm the fucking cafeteria lady of all that shit. You want some old mashed potatoes, motherfucker? <laughs> I'm everybody in this bitch. Motherfucker walk in. I got a hairnet on. What you having today, Stanley? Mashed potatoes? <laughs> I'm everybody in this motherfucking company, goddammit. You turn the corner like, wait a minute. The janitor? That motherfucker just served me some mashed potatoes. Same dude. Damn. Motherfucker open the door, reception is sitting there. Wait a minute. This motherfucker right here. <laughs> yep, same dude. <laughs>
Hey, Tony, man, you be out there getting it, brother. Get there and get it, brother. Hey, you getting over, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's going to pass right through you. Keep drinking them juices, man. Keep drinking juice. A lot of vitamin C. Put Like, help your immune system as much as you can. Push that shit straight through, man. Push it straight through. Blizzard uh, season coming soon in these parts. Can't be taking every ride. The salt will rust your shit out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And what you got to do is clean the whole undercarriage of your car. Get some silicone spray like that silicone and silicone the whole undercarriage of your fucking car. Because nobody going to see it any fucking way. So it ain't like it got to be pretty. It ain't got to be pretty. Just holds all the mud off, holds all the shit off. Go get a can of that fucking clear silicone shit and just spray everything all up under your fucking car as much as you can. Because what's going to happen? I did my Escalade like that before I moved to St. Louis. I fucking cleaned the whole undercarriage, went through, painted everything black, and then I siliconed the whole fucking undercarriage, everything, like three fucking cans. Because it's like, nobody going to see under there anyway. I just don't want the shit to rust. It ain't got to be perfect. It just got to, you know, get on parts and adhere to parts. Yeah, C60 oil is the best antioxidant. Yep, that's it, man. You got to get shit like that because you're protecting the undercarriage, places that you ne never look. Spray that shit everywhere up under there. People are like, well, I don't want to get overspray. It don't matter if you get overspray on shit. It's cool because you want to cover the whole bottom of that shit. Spray that shit everywhere if you can. Get it on everything. If it gets on something hot like an exhaust system, all it's going to do is burn off. You're going to smell it a little bit. Be like, Ooh, what's that funny ass smell? I sprayed. I made a mistake. Hit the exhaust system with that spray shit I was putting up under there. And make sure you do your bolts. Any bolts, man. Because you don't want a bolt to rust out. If a bolt rusts out and it gets real weak and you got to change a part, snap you just snap the bolt off now you gotta like get it out you gotta tap it tap the bolt and then get it out that way it psh, i always spray my bolts off you look up under my jeep i got black spray paint on all that shit psh, 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 psh. and i'll get the clear coat i'll get the uh black gloss so i'll go through and hit all my bolts with black gloss just like psh, 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 psh. that way rust don't stick to it it's it's painted it's not bare metal no more it's like a bunch of black bolts up under there even the threads i hit the threads a few times just because you don't want that shit to lock up. When that shit locks up, that's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> I just saw what Tony say, you stupid. Oh, we get to spray these nuts. <laughs> hey, you need to fucking make that spray for ride share, man. You need to see. Hey, I'm going to get some motherfucking crusty on my dusty. That's going to be my air spray. Crusty on my dusty. And you're going to have a fucking air spray called these nuts. <laughs> It's like make sure you get crusty from a dusty for the inside to keep all the passengers right, and for the underside, these nuts. <laughs> it's like shit. Make sure your shit don't rust out and get all salted and break off. Get a can of Tony's these nuts. <laughs> it's like shit. This is all ride share maintenance and care. <laughs> they be like, dude, where are you buying this shit from? Us oh, a ride share maintenance and care shop. Like, dude, this can't be real shit. No, it's real. <laughs> they be like, really, John? These nuts? You want me to pick up these nuts? <laughs> yeah, pick up these nuts. <laughs> it's like, what you holding in your hand? These nuts. <laughs> it's like, wait a fucking minute. You set me up, John. You're setting me up. <laughs> This is Uber would be mad if I bragged that my vehicle is protected by these nuts. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Jay, you need that sticker, right? Like you see how the people got them decals on their car. You put vehicle protected by these nuts. <laughs> Motherfucker gonna be walking through the Walmart parking lot, read that shit like vehicle protected by these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> little kids gonna be dying laughing dying laughing hey all right tony my man hey thank you for the laughs today brother thank you for hey get better out there my man hey hopefully you can hit this weekend let us know how you do you know after the week i know you're gonna hit it man you're gonna hit it just keep going out there and getting it brother keep getting it game time get that money all right brother tell lisa everybody say what's up and you guys are good post that link one more time in the chat so people can go hit it and check out that uh the what is the registry and everything like that? Hit it up. Jay, Jay, that shit's funny, man. That shit's funny. Fucking Tony, man. He don't make no fucking sense, I swear. Every time that motherfucker... <laughs> I had... And then when I was in the store and I saw the bag of that shit, I fell out laughing. I was like, man, Tony is everywhere. This motherfucker's all... He's in the Matrix. Tony is in the fucking Matrix. <laughs> Like, man, you're going to be fucking shopping. You're going to get a big-ass box of cereal off the shelf. Tony head going to pop out. These nuts. <laughs> like, wait a minute, put the box back, motherfucker. That was Tony. 
Like, hold up. Motherfucker grab a shirt off the rack. Oh, man, I'm going to buy one of these shirts. Ooh, they got XL. Let me get this shirt. Take the shirt off the rack. Tony be like, these nuts. <laughs> Put the shirt back. Goddamn. I swear that's the same motherfucker that was over there by the, by the cereal. <laughs> Yo, what up, Ryan? What up, Ryan? <laughs> exactly. Tony. <laughs> these nuts they're great <laughs> you need to put that shit hey you need to put that on a box make a new cereal called tony the tiger mixed with these nuts mr beast <laughs> you should try these nuts they're great <laughs> tony gonna have all kids not able to go in a grocery store <laughs> <laughs> All these companies just walking around. Dad, I'm gonna buy these nuts. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, David, there, there probably won't be a video come out tomorrow because I haven't driven yet. I want to get out and do some car work. I might do a car video. I don't know. I got to do that front spoiler on my car. I might do that tomorrow, but I haven't driven, so I haven't been able to do a video. That's the only thing. So I've been, and I haven't even done like many podcasts this week. I got to do more podcasts or something. We can catch up and chat. People can send me stuff. I need to learn how to put stuff on the screen. So when people email me stuff, I can put it on the screen and kind of talk about their driving and stuff too. That would be pretty cool. That would be cool. Man, this is all my car video. Not going to lie, man. Them car videos be killing me, man. I'll be out there having a blast. I'll be trying to run it, you know, get it going. I'll be under the car. I got to, when I'm going to do my wheels though, when I do my tires, I'm going to do my tires in the garage. I'll do that on the video for sure. But I'm always doing tire videos. I love changing tires, man. That shit's fun. It's a nightmare, but it's so much fun though. Man, what up all walking in late? What up, Lavander? He's in here. Lavander Anders, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> He's in the Matrix now, Lavander, Mr. Anderson. Fucking that's Neo. You need to change your name to Neo. Lavander Neo Anderson. <laughs> oh, man. Man, man. All right, man. Y'all get up there and get it, man. Get it, Tony, man. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, David, I'm going to see what I can do. To, like tonight, I'll be out there changing a the, uh, front spoiler and everything like that. But yeah, this, like I said, there's another, um, the live right before this one, there's a live I did earlier tonight before the mic went out. So that's probably one live. And that was only maybe like an hour. I did that live for about an hour. And then this one started because the, the mic, because I did something to the microphone because it was all tripping and shit. And the sound went out. So I was like, ah, whatever. So I just started this one up. The Rev, what up, Rev? DoorDash Revolution, the Rev, my man, my man, man. And that's the thing, though. What we need to do, like I said, is, is somehow get a get a, a tire changing video and then get more people, especially if you got a garage at home. You could buy these little manual tire changers. Dude, they're cheap as hell. They're like Harbor Freight and shit. And I just bolt, I got a drill, bolted mine to the ground so it don't move. I just bolted it right to the concrete with these anchors. So you anchor it to the concrete, bro. I'm telling you, you can get tires dirt cheap, dirt cheap online. I mean, I'll be buying like thousand dollars worth of tires for like 400 bucks. It's like, that's what I do, man. Two thousand dollars worth of tires, 1100 bucks. It's like, do that shit yourself, man. And all that money I save in profit is just an afternoon of me doing it in the garage. And plus, there's a lot of videos on how to actually change a tire, which is a lot easier than what people think it is. Changing a tire is easier than what people think. You just got to make sure you get the, the bead of the tire under where it seats so you can get that, that extra leverage to pull it forward and backwards. It's a little give. That's it. But I don't mind. Like I said, it, to me, it's all about, you know, running this thing as a business. And what a lot of people out there are saying, oh, go get a real job, get a real job. They don't understand all of the work we do within doing ride share to create a business out of this. I mean, you've got to deal with profit margins because without profit margins, you can't afford to even fix repairs on your car. You can't repair it. You don't have no profit margins. Then if you don't have profit margins, you can't take care of it with your life. You can't pay for your rent, your your bills and shit like that. So you are merging ride share with life, which is way harder, I think, than having a, a, a W-2 job. W-2 job, different departments do different things at that W-2 for you. They do your finance, your accounting, your hiring, your firing. They do your shipping, your receiving. They do your insurance, your compliance. You just go in, you clock in, and you do whatever you're hired to do, and you leave. That's an easy company. That's a It's a job. It's easy as a motherfucker. You just go in and do what you, well, this is my job description. I come in. Something comes down the assembly line. I look at both sides to verify it's good. I put it back on the line. It goes down. Next one comes down. I look at it. I flip it back and forth forward, make sure it's fine. I put it back and it go. That shit's easy. 
Because somebody's doing all the paperwork, somebody's doing the HR, somebody's doing your insurance, somebody's fixing all the vehicles at the company, somebody's painting all the shit. Easy. Now, try to do ride share. And only if you say the only thing I'm going to do in ride share is drive, that's it. I'm only going to drive. You didn't maintain your vehicle. You didn't set up your, you're not doing any business analysts. You don't have the right devices for your company because you need device management. You need to make sure you got the right phones. If your phone messes up, you got to fix that because you don't have a department for that shit. You got to have something with your, you know, your finances, whether you got a high interest loan, low interest loans, you're buying shit in cash. I mean, ride share is, is a top to bottom fucking business, top to bottom. So when people tell me, man, you need to get a real job. You see that shit, real job. That shows me that they don't understand ride share because if they knew that this wasn't a job, this is not a job. So for you to say to go get a real job, you should just probably say, Jeff, just go get a job. Shut your business down. Shut your ride share business down and just go get a job. Because that's what this is. This is a business. It's not a job. So it can't be a fake job because it's just not a job. It's not a job. It's a business. So when motherfuckers are saying, go get a real job, you sound stupid. Just say, go get a job. That's it. Just say, Jeff, go get a job. Because this is a business, not a job. Way different than clocking in and clocking out. Way different from having another department worry about the shit that need to be worried about. Way different than being able to call a, a manager in support or call somebody downstairs in compliance. This is way different. We do it all. This is a fucking business. And it pays real money because when I look on my counter, I see a bill sitting there and there's an amount on it. Uber Eats, two miles per nine. There he is. Ride flow to people who push that real job and they're stuck in the matrix. Real shit, real shit. They stuck in a fucking mental matrix. Because when I see those bills sitting on my counter, there's a real amount on that bill. That bill is $132. That's the real amount that I have to pay somebody. I do ride share. I run my business. I make money with that. Get $132, transfer it to my bank. I transfer to $132 to that company. That company never says, do you have a real job? Where'd this money come from? Well, I do ride share. Oh, oh, we can't take that. <laughs> it's not real money. That's not real money, Jeff. You do ride share, dude. Get a real job. We can't take this fucking $132. Bullshit. They be like, thank you for your payment. We'll see you next month. This is a business. For all the real job people that like to jump in comments, they don't understand what the fuck is even going on. With a job, you have a duty, a responsibility. That's all you have. You have a job description. That's all you have. And ride share, there's no telling what I'm going to do today. I might wake up today and have to fucking put new tires on the car. I might have to wake up today and refinance the car. I might have to wake up today and just buy a whole other fucking car. I might have to wake up today just to drive people everywhere. Wake up today, you know, do maintenance on the car. I don't know. Because with ride share, every day is different from the day before. With a job, you're in a cycle. And it's meant to be like that because that's why they have training. They're in, in ride share, there's no training. There's no training in ride share. You know how the app works. They don't tell you how the app works. They want to fuck you over as much as possible. So they don't tell you how the app works. Yeah, there's NPCs, man. <laughs> Fucking clowns. They don't tell you how the app works. So they want to keep you as stupid as possible. So there is no job training with rideshare. You sign up, you get a background check. They tell you you're good to go. Let's drive. That's all they fucking say. There's no training. Uber says, oh, no, we're going to send you training. We're going to send somebody in a car with you to drive for your first two days to make sure you're doing it right. Blah, blah, blah. They don't do that shit because this ain't a fucking job. You don't get job training on something that's not a job. That's like having business training when you open up your own business. If you open up a business and you get a loan from a bank, and you says, I want to open up a fucking bakery. The bank says, here's $200,000 to get started with that bakery. Here's, here's money for your business. They're going to tell you good luck. Good luck with your business. Good luck. Hope you make money. Hope you get a lot of customers. Hope you do well. They ain't going to say, okay, well, we're going to treat your business like a job. So tomorrow, the bank's going to send four people to your business with you. And we're going to all work with you for the first month to train you on how to do a fucking bakery. We're going to train you on how to run your bakery and train you on how to make money to pay us back. They ain't gonna say that shit. It's a business. You don't get business training when you run a business. Either you know what the fuck you're doing or you don't. That's all it is. Either you know what you're doing and you're gonna succeed or you don't and you're gonna eventually end up at a fucking job. That's how it really works. And a lot of people who used to do ride share, man, I gotta get this shit up, man, I gotta go back to a job. Multitude of reasons for that. 
market could have dried up. If the market could not dry, it could be saturated market. It could be a very small market that is not conducive to having ride share or delivery as a full time job. It could be that. So a lot of people don't understand that when it's a business, you just dissolve the business. That's just what it is. When it's a job, you have to resign, get fired, you get unemployment, you get all this shit going on when it's a job. A business, you don't get none of those luxuries. You got to do all this shit on your own. You do your own fucking taxes, your own fucking health care, your own fucking dental can, your own budget, your own fucking maintenance. It's a business. So the moment a motherfucker say, go get a real job, that lets me know this motherfucker probably never did ride share. They have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. It's just a hater on the ride share channel. You now need to go get a real job. Go get a real job. First off, I don't even have a fucking job. I have a business. We ain't even speaking the same fucking language, motherfucker. We, we're in a totally different league. You sit on a fucking playground and we in a stadium. We in a totally different fucking league than you. So I'm like, I'm one of those people that say, hey, if you want to have a job and be happy you have a job and, and use Roger to get to and from your job, cool, knock yourself the fuck out. I'm happy for you. But somebody has to run the business of ride share to get people to their jobs. We even get people to their businesses. We get people to hospitals. We get people from bars and clubs and shit. This is a business. There is no training. The only training we really get is from each other. The only motivation we get is from each other. We get banged up by the apps. We get beat up by the apps. We get taken advantage of by the apps. The apps steal from us all the fucking time because they don't give us transparency to what we even know we're making sometimes. And then we got to deal with these lying ass motherfucking customers going, oh, man, I didn't get my motherfucking egg biscuit. What the fuck you eating right now? An egg biscuit. There you go, you lying motherfucker. There you go. And so I'm not one of those people who has ever entertained motherfuckers. Like That's why you don't see in my comments and in my channel a lot. People going, you need to go get a real job because I don't want to hand them their ass. I really don't want to hand them their ass because I'll make them feel little. And I don't want to make people feel little. I want them to fucking tip me when I pick their raggedy ass up and drop them off at their fucking job. That's what I really want to do. I'm willing to take you to your fucking W-2 while you in my face. You need to get a real job. How the fuck you going to get to work if I go get a real job? That don't make no sense. If I go get a real job, you don't get paid enough at your job to even have a fucking car. So you need people like me to get your ass to and from your real job. Where the fuck is this even making sense? It ain't making no sense. <laughs> oh, Jay, I appreciate that, brother. Said, That's right. Got my best info right here. Trust me. It took a couple of months, but I saw the way. That's right, brother. That's right. And I'm always reiterating it by making videos showing, you know, myself talking about cherry picking with chat. And with the apps and shit like that, because if people don't, if they don't see it, they'll believe any of these raggedy motherfuckers in these comments. Oh, you guys going to cherry pick your way out of a job. Keep cherry picking. You're going to be, gone. man, this motherfucker's 1% AR, 3% AR, 30% AR. You're going to cherry pick yourself out of a job. You're going to get deactivated. Who the fuck are these people and who told them this shit? That's what I want to know. Like you can't even, they don't even validate or verify who the fuck they are. They've heard it from somebody else, and now they want to spread that shit to people who know better. People like me, I know better. So if I listen to them, I'm going to end up like them, and I don't want to end up in the same boat they're in. So I don't listen to them. And just like with the real job crowd, I don't listen to them that much because I've had real jobs my whole life. I've walked away from real jobs, resigned from real jobs, got fired from real jobs, quit real jobs. This to me is, is the freedom to not have a job. This is the freedom of not having a job. And motherfuckers out there don't understand that. There are no bosses in rideshare. You just wake up and you do what you feel like fucking doing. The app is your boss. Bullshit. The app can't tell me, Jeff, it's five o'clock. You need to get online. App can't tell me that shit. Seven o'clock, Jeff. You need to go. You need to go home for the day, Jeff. Seven. App can't tell me shit. Well, that's where your money's coming from. Motherfucker, when I go shop at Walmart. Walmart's money comes from me. I'm giving Walmart money. So because I'm giving Walmart money, does that make me the boss of fucking Walmart? No, it don't. I'm a customer of fucking Walmart. I'm at Walmart picking up some shit to bring back to my house, even though they get money from me. So people with this whole fallacy of if somebody gives you money, that means they're your boss. You give money to the hospital when you go to the hospital. Are you the hospital's fucking boss? 
you give money to the mechanic when you take your shop to the with your car to the fucking shop. Does that mean you own the shop and you're the you're the shop's boss? Oh, well, I'm the boss because I'm the one giving you guys a thousand dollars. I'm giving you guys money, so I'm the boss. No, you ain't. You just got your broken shit fixed. Get it and get the fuck out of here. Nobody's gonna say that shit. You the boss because you pay people. Uber's not our boss because they pay us. We're contractors. They're an app. They're a corporation. A lot of corporations all over the world deal with contractors and subcontractors. That don't mean that corporation is their boss. When you go to Uber corporate, there's landscaping that has to be done. All the trees got to be trimmed. The grass got to be cut. The rocks got to be put back into the right place. They're going to call a contractor. Do me a favor. Come do all the rocks, do the trees, trim the grass, do all what you got to do. Nobody ever said that that landscaping company, Uber is their boss. No, Uber is not their boss. Uber contracted with them to get something done that they needed done. Uber contracts with us to get something done that needs to be done. Jeff, can you pick up Shelly and take her to work? Either yes or no. I can decline a shit, cancel the shit. I mean, you're not my fucking boss. I might say, sure, I'll take her. No problem. How much? $10 for three miles. Gotcha. Jeff, can you take Sarah to work? 15 miles, $6. Nah, I'm cool. Nah, I'm cool on that shit. I'm, nah, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, we'll just try somebody else. Thanks, Jeff. All right, no problem. You can't tell a boss that shit. You, you at your motherfucking W-2 tomorrow. When a boss says, hey, can you do me a favor? Take these papers upstairs to uh, Jack and make sure Jack signs this. Be like, nah, I don't, I don't feel like going upstairs and fucking with Jack today. I just really don't. I just don't feel like fucking with him today. Excuse me? I'm not taking them papers to Jack. Fuck Jack. I'm not going upstairs. I'm sitting right here at my motherfucking desk. I got my solitaire game going. I'm damn near on the final fucking card. And you asked me to take some shit upstairs to Jack? Man, fuck that. Take it yourself. HR, we're sending Jeff downstairs. I think today's his last day. <laughs> That's a job, motherfucker. <laughs> That's a job. I don't have a job. I am the fucking job. The job is what I do. We're businesses. So you can't say Uber's my boss because Uber doesn't say shit. Uber, to, Jeff's not taking nobody today. Jeff's canceled 20 fucking rides and, you know, over the past month. And he's declined like six today. KC business strategies. Oh, I see. Hey, hey, out there cherry picking these raggedy streets. <laughs> She's out there cherry picking them ragged ass streets. Make sure you go grab you a crusty, dusty, bite that motherfucker and then throw it over the fence. <laughs> Yeah, so I wouldn't really stress, you know, and, and I'm glad a lot of people, especially, you know, how the ride share community is, we're willing to talk success on our channels because so many channels don't welcome success. And that's why I think the channels that don't welcome success invite haters. They invite haters in. Haters fucking flood them channels. You look through all the comments, all these idiotic ass drivers can't believe you guys are this stupid to still be driving. I've been at my job now for six months. I fucking love it here. They're going to give me a 25 cent an hour raise in another two weeks. God damn it. I've been working my ass off. Okay, 25 cents an hour raise. I'm proud of you, dog. I don't know what to tell you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, motherfucker. They're paying me 18. I'm about to get 18, 25. Give me another couple of weeks. And I'm getting trained on the other machine over there. Cool, motherfucker. Cool. If I want to raise, I just stop taking shit rides. That's all I do. It's like, okay, I'm tired of a dollar an hour. Let's go for $3 an hour. Holy shit, I did three rides this hour. I just made $60 this hour. Last hour, I only made fucking 20. I made 22. I went from $22 an hour to $60 an hour. Holy shit, I got a $38 an hour raise. And I didn't have to fucking work that other machine over there at a 25 cent an hour raise. Fuck that. I ain't had to be trained on that shit. There is no training in ride share. There is no training. We're going to help you make an extra $5 an hour. How? We're going to give you rideshare training. We're going to sit an Uber employee in your front fucking seat, and we're going to drive around and show you how to make more money, you raggedy ass driver. You're wasting your time and effort and opportunity. You could be making so much more. We're going to put a driver with you to drive around the show. No, they don't do that shit. They hope you taking fucking $15 an hour rides. They hope you taking $20 because that means more profit for them. We don't work for them. Those are not our fucking bosses. We don't fuck with them like that. We fuck with each other. This is how we make our money, by educating each other, passing knowledge, sharing success, talking about the trouble we had, talking about because if I never talked about my troubles and my fuck ups with the surges and all this, I would have never known how to do things better. 
So we share how we do fuck ups on this channel. And somebody in the comments somewhere, they will be like, bro, this is what you got to do, man. This is where you fucked up. This is what you got to do. That's called helping each other. Other channels, if you say I fucked up, yeah, you fucked up. The first thing you did was turn on the app. That's your first fuck up. You need to quit and go get a real fucking job, you raggedy motherfucker. Go get a... That's other channels talk like that. We don't do that shit over here. I'd be like, well, what do you mean? What, what happened? What are you talking about? Give me some more information. Let's see if we can walk through this shit. What's up? And we walk through the shit and we find out where the issue was. The issue is you had it on all rides. Turn it off all rides and put that shit on Lux and fucking sit there and don't let them shit on you. Two days later, motherfucker call back. Bruh, I put it on all rides. I had way less rides, but I made way more money. There you go. Because we talked it out. You ain't getting no motherfucking job training in ride share. This is us. This is us. And it's a lot of people out there not ready for that. They're not ready for that mentality because they're still stuck in that employee slave mentality. Do what we tell you. If we send you a ride to your phone and you say you'll do rides for us, then you got to do this ride because we sent you a ride. Motherfucker, this is 70 miles. And you're going to give me $36 for 70 miles? You got to do it because you signed up for this shit. If you signed up for this shit, this is what you got to do. The fuck I do? No, I don't. Doubt it. Pfft, I'm out, motherfucker. Get somebody else to do that shit. Very next ride, $16, four miles. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Some shit like that. That's what I'm talking $4 a mile, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking no 50 cent a fucking mile. People are like, oh, but you could have got, you know, $36 instead of fucking 16. You could have got 36. Yeah, I could be 70 fucking miles away from home too. Turn around, come 70 miles back. So 140 miles of driving for $36. I use $36 in gas doing that shit. <laughs> It's like, but they don't do that, man. They don't do that. A lot of these people on these channels, they don't help each other. They don't educate each other. You, you're right. You're right. Right. Experience is the greatest teacher, but someone else's experience can be just as valuable if you pay attention and listen. Yeah, because that's how somebody helped me with the surge shit. They helped me with it. Because I didn't know that. I've been doing this shit for, what, this November be five years. Been doing this shit for almost five years. I just found out this year. Because motherfuckers don't be talking. I've been on Rosh Air channels. My Rosh Air channel... I didn't hit a thousand subs until November last year. I hit a thousand subs in November of last year. It's only September and I'm at like 5,300, 5,200, something like that. Shit exploded over the past year of people seeking not because of the way I started running my channel is I don't fucking bullshit nobody. I ain't got time for that shit. If we gonna make this money, let's make this fucking money. There is no, well, I'm better than you because I got all the fucking secrets. So you can sit and watch my money stack. Look at me. Come to my channel. Watch my money stack. You a motherfucking crackhead because you ain't got money like me. You can just buy two motherfucking donuts. I could buy a whole fucking box of donuts. Watch my money stack. I hate fucking channels like that. It's a bunch of fucking clout chasing ass. Watch my money stack. Put me on a pedestal. Motherfucking channels who ain't even trying to fucking help nobody. Buy my book. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It was like, God, I love it. I just got an Uber support manager saying a writer who had the knife said I stole his AirPods. They're threatening my account. I don't even own an iPhone. Oh, that's fucked up. But be like, dude, I don't even have no AirPods. What the fuck? He should be able to track his damn AirPods. Lying ass motherfucker. Yeah, but I can't. And that's what was on YouTube so much when I first got on here. Even when my channel didn't have a thousand subs, the most I would be on channels just watching people fighting and arguing competing with each other all the time. Well, I'll make more than you. You don't know how to, well, it could be a lot of different factors in that. He might be in a market with 30,000 people. You might be in a market with 500,000 people. It could be a lot of different reasons why, but until you sit down as drivers and talk about it and discuss how you can help this driver in a smaller market and make good money, you're not trying to help this driver. You're trying to make yourself look fucking good for people. Oh, I'm this and I'm that. Look at me. Look at mama. Look, I'm, I'm buying this. Yeah, come check me out, motherfucker. Everybody saw my shit. Check me the fuck out. And then you got other fucking drivers on them channels. Oh, yeah, me too. And those and all those creators, all they fucking do is they stick in little pods together. They don't even talk to drivers. They don't talk. No, you've got to have 50,000 subscribers in order for this motherfucker to even notice who you are. If you don't have 50,000 subscribers, they don't even say your fucking name. I'll be like, KK, Bornay Z, Ride Flow, Ron, Leo, Ron, Casey Business. I say every fucking body's name because we're drivers doing this fucking shit. Other channels, you could type all motherfucking day. They, ain't gonna, they never fucking say your advice, never help you with advice, never fucking suggest your advice because they don't see you. 
the moment a motherfucker with 100,000 subs type in the word hi, oh my God, my homeboy just got in here. Oh my God, oh shit, this motherfucker said hi to me, man. This motherfucker right here, he said, what's up? He said hi. If y'all don't know him, go to his channel. He got 100,000 fucking subs. I'll be like, all he said was hi. It's been drivers giving nothing but dropping jewels all fucking day. Drivers been dropping jewels all my fucking day. But because this mother got 100,000 subs, oh my God, he's on my channel, everybody. Look at this motherfucker, check him out. Oh shit, yeah. I'm like, man, fuck these motherfucking cloud chasers. I can't fuck with them. And that's why nobody was making money. The moment we opened it up and said, there ain't no secrets in ride share, let's make this money. Let's do this shit. Drivers started really digging into it. Drivers started seeing what the fuck was really going on. Like, oh, that's all I got to do to make money? Yep, that's what you got to do. You got to position yourself, man. Set your filter. Don't leave. Don't go nowhere. This is what you do to make that money. Instead of just having a channel going, hey, man, I just made 2200 Want to see me make another 2200 Come back next video and I'll make another 2200 You want to see me make 2200 after that? Come back two videos from now. I'm going to keep making 2200 and you can just keep watching me. How you do it? I just hustle. I just hustle. I be just hustling, man. I'm just hustling. This is what I do, man. I be hustling. Y'all don't get it, man. I be hustling. It's like, okay, but how? Like, give us some tactics and strategies. Get in your car. Drive. Is it? You gotta hustle. Turn the key. Turn the wheel. Hustle. That's it. It's like, motherfucker. This ain't no motherfucking channel of advice. This is bullshit. This motherfucker just sitting there pumping himself the fuck up all day. Can't watch this shit. <laughs> it's like, it ain't doing nothing for me. And so we create a channel, a whole network of motherfucking drivers out here who don't give a fuck. They see my videos. They're like, Jeff, you fucked up. Bro, you could have kept that 13. How? I'm going to email you real quick. And that's how we help each other. That's how we do it. Uh-oh, what KK say? If all the drivers were cherry-picking, then there would be no more shitty rides. Bam! There you go. There you go. And that's what we say. If people stop accepting the shitty rides, they got to automatically increase the fare for them rides in order for them rides to get taken. The, Uber and Lyft going to get tired of letting rides go. They don't get sick of letting rides go because nobody's picking them up. It's good fucking money. They charging $12, $14 for this fucking ride, but they giving the driver fucking $4. Keeping 10 to their damn self. No, you got to open that motherfucking profit margin up a little bit for drivers. If you take a $14 for that motherfucker, get a driver seven. Seven for three miles. I guarantee somebody takes it. But at a dollar a mile, they're going to keep giving somebody fucking three miles. Three dollars, four dollars, three dollars, four dollars. Why? Because these raggedy motherfuckers, I'm looking for a dollar a mile. I just want a dollar a mile. And live here, that shit, and live be like, all they want is a dollar a mile? That's it? We charging fourteen dollars for these rides. Get them motherfuckers a dollar a mile if that's what they want. Oh, Jesse said, "All right, Jeff, cars clean, got the crusty donut air freshener going. <laughs> Time to go get these small rides higher. Hey, go get it, Jesse, brother, go get it. He got that crusty donut air. <laughs> Watch everybody be like, oh shit, this motherfucker smell good up in this motherfucker. That's the crusty on my dusty. <laughs> what up, Aaron? What's good?" Oh, yeah, Lyft is busier than Uber now. Lyft stay busy, man. They they forever sending out shit rides, forever. 5.6 miles to pick up, 4.7 to destination, paying $6.78. What the actual fuck? <laughs> I'll be like, what the fuck is this? Hold up for a second. Wait, is this a typo? Is, I think it's a fucking typo. You're missing the one. The one fell off. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Man, man, man. Oh, Zick said, did a quick hour of Lyft today. One ride. I was on a $9 bonus, got a $2 tip. Plus the money from the actual trip. The trip ended up being a little over one mile for about $15. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what's going to pull your average up, Zick. Rides like that. That's the shit that pulls your average up. Because if you can do three, four of those a day, if you do four of those a day, that's $60 you got for going four fucking miles. That pulls your average through the roof. Your average is through the, and you just got to keep finding them. Keep the opportunities open to get them. Go to an area where you know everybody needs a short ride. Like sometimes when I go to movie theaters or you go to like an event, everybody's parked somewhere else because they don't want to pay event parking. So they'll park like two miles away. Each one of them rides is fucking $14 a piece. So find an event like a big ass circus going on in town or something going on downtown, like a symphony or whatever like that. Everybody's parking far because they don't want to pay fucking, you know, $30, $40 to park. So they'll just park their shit and free somewhere like at a bank or at a hotel somewhere and they just Ubering back and forth. It's cheaper for them to do that than for them to park. And plus they don't want to be stuck in all that crazy fucking traffic when they get in or get out. So they park two miles down the road and then they Uber in for fucking $10. And then when they leave because it's surging up a little bit, they got to pay 25 to get out. 
So they just paid thirty five dollars. They had to deal with no fucking traffic. They didn't have to pay the fifty dollars to park. So they save money. And it's like you got to just fucking find them events, man. Find them events and start picking that shit apart. Whenever you like and look through sometimes look through your paper, the Uber app be saying shit sometimes. But you got to look through like social media sometimes. Look through the paper. Find out where's an event. It could be a fucking a country fair or something going on. Oktoberfest, a beer fest or something weird going on. That the app like the apps will only advertise areas that pay them to advertise for them. Uber doesn't tell you all the events going on because if an event doesn't like pay Uber or contribute money to Uber or Lyft, most likely they're not going to say shit about it. They won't. So you got to sit up there and go, okay, what events are going on? Oh shit. There's a little carnival going on down here. And that carnival is going to be going on all week and hit it, hit it up. Cause everybody's making money. Everybody's making money. Was that LAX trip 44 for 29 miles? I could do that 44 for 29 miles. And if it's coming from where I'm thinking, like if it's going 29 miles to where I want to go, I'm taking that 44. That's my gas money right there. That's my gas money. 44 bucks in gas money to get to where I got to get to. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Yep. Killing it with reservation rides. That's where the money's at. Yep. And a $20 tip on top of that. Shit. You can't miss with that. You can't miss. What Jay say? Exactly. I got $10 and $20 tip two days ago when one was $6 ride. The other one was 14. Both rides total 45 minutes, maybe 15, 20 miles. That's what it is, Jay. That's what it is. And that's why, you know, we we're trying to educate the newer generation of drivers out there. And we're taking notes. We're taking notes from drivers like you. A lot of us, especially the old heads that have been doing this shit for five, six years. We're doing it the new way. We're trying to educate each other in the new way. We ain't on them fucking braggy channels. that got secrets and shit. Oh, I'm going to show you, motherfuckers, you know, I made $1,000 in two days. I would show you how, but you got to join my Patreon to find out. Man, shut the fuck up. Fuck that shit. Sign off. A lot of channels, man. And even on my fucking thing, like I said, I used to I used to sub a lot of ride share channels. I really did. But as time went on, I had to get off of them because it was just a bunch of bullshit in my news feed. And it was killing my fucking news feed because I want to see actual good shit. So I free up all the bullshit and I see good shit coming down the pipe. Because a lot of people, like I said, a lot of channels out there ain't really helping drivers. They're they're facade channels. They're there just for activity. They're going to pump themselves up. They're there to act like they want to do. I was like, I ain't got time for that shit, man. We got too many families out here starving. Too many. If Rideshare got this much money involved, if it's this, we know, and Uber's turning profits. It's this much fucking money in there where Uber's turning profits. Why ain't we turning fucking profits and we the motherfuckers doing a ride? We need to get to the bottom of that. Let's get to the bottom of that. How is Uber turning a profit finally? But we're suffering finally. We taking shit rides. That's how they doing it. Selling shit rides. The driver's willing to take that shit. Because just like KK said, if everybody stopped taking shit rides, the fare would have to go up for shit rides. You wouldn't see no more $2.62. You wouldn't see no more $3.99. All them fucking rides got to be at least five, six, seven dollars a piece. That's right, Ride Flow. If somebody is winning and somebody else is losing, and they was winning big, Uber was winning big, and we're the ones doing all the fucking work. So I'm sitting there like, if we can get everybody, if they if they're loading our cars up with with four riders, five riders at a time, we should be compensated for that shit. That's a lot of people in my car for three ninety nine. Look, Aaron said they love listening to you, Jeff, while driving. Makes my time fly. Oh, appreciate that, brother. Appreciate. Hey, and this is what we do, man. Sometimes I don't even listen to music. I rather listen to a podcast, listen to something going on. I listen to news every once in a while just to stay up and up on everything. What up, Medina? And that's what it is, though. Sometimes, man, we, we got to listen to to that energy, that ride share energy to get over that final hump of making that money, of standing that groove. Because I've done some dumb shit to where I'm like, man, let me go t- try to get this money. Let me try to go get this money. I'll do a dumb movie like, why the fuck did I do that? Because she left her motherfucking driver license at Circle K. So I picked the ass up with this fucking nature hike. When it was a good surge going, had to turn around, come back. Circle K closed. She can't get her ID. Go that way. All that shit I had to deal with for a $6 tip on top of that. When I drove way the fuck outside of any zone I had, man, I was so mad that night. I was so mad that night. And sometimes just listening to podcasts and listening to people that know what the fuck they doing and listening to people keep you motivated about staying on top of your plan, on top of your goal. Because I, I lost track. I was trying to do that shit and get all them little bonuses within that little time frame. And I was out there chasing all that money, getting all that money. To, 
And I took that one. I said, well, if I take this nature hike, it'll sit me there. It went further than what I thought. It went way. And it took longer than I thought because the girl left her motherfucking driver license at Circle K. So when we got down to university and rule, we had to turn around and come all the fucking way back to that Circle K. For her to get out, motherfucking Circle K is not there. I mean, the Circle K is closed. So she's standing in the front. And I'm like, you can't just stand in front of Circle K like it's going to open back up. We got to go. We fucked up enough time already. By coming back, by you leaving that shit there. We got to go, lady. Let's go. So finally, she gets in the car. She's drunk in the front seat. Loud as a motherfucker. Trying to touch my radio and shit. Is, and I'm like, ah, motherfucker. The drunk person should always sit in the back. Never let the drunk person sit in the front seat. Sober person, sit in the front seat. But it was a husband and wife couple in the back. And she was the single one. She was the drunk one. I don't care. Put the husband in the front. Sit the drunk girl in the back with her friend. Because there should not be a drunk person in the front when you got a fucking radio. Because these motherfuckers, get your fucking hands off my radio. I'm trying to listen to Doja Cat. Fuck Doja Cat. I'm trying to listen to this motherfucker. Get off my motherfucking radio. <laughs> it's like these people. Uh, Zig, Zig, stupid. So there's one channel where the dude wears shades in a dark room while telling people to work 80 hours <laughs> Zick, that's the ride share vampire. This motherfucker come out of a crypt. Up. Make sure you work 80 hours. <laughs> this motherfucker tells from the crypt and shit. <laughs> motherfucker be like, I'm finally awake from my slumber. Time for Uber. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker. Goddamn tales from the crypt drive motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. Swear to God, I saw a motherfucking sarcophagus in the back of that motherfucking room. Is that King Tut is my savior? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> See, telling someone to drive all day, every day is so counterproductive. All hours are not equal. Yes, yes. Zick, you said, I'm glad I just read your comment. All hours are not equal. That's what we've been saying. Motherfuckers got to know when to hit it. They got to know when to hit it. This is y'all on fire tonight. <laughs> hey, we be having fun like a motherfucker in here. But it's like, if you know there ain't no surge out, there ain't a lot of rides, a bunch of bullshit, especially on Lyft. It ain't no surge on Lyft. You gonna have a hard time. You got to get reservations. You got to get party areas, short trips. If that shit ain't going on, it is not a lucrative time to drive right now. You're wasting your time. You're spinning your wheels in mud. And there's been nights when I've been out and I'm like, dude, there's no motherfucking drive. There's no people out. I will shut that shit down with a hundred and come home. I got a hundred bucks. I need to stay out and make 200, 300. Man, it'll be seven o'clock in the morning by the time I hit that shit. Cause you got to know the right time. Sometimes there is no good time. There's no good time. And it's like when it's traffic, bumper to bumper traffic, excuse me, accidents on the 10, cadaver driver. <laughs> it's funny shit. Yeah, when it's fucking bumper to bumper traffic, got an accident on the 10, accident on the 202, traffic ain't going nowhere. If you accept that motherfucking request, that driver, that rider's going to cancel you because you ain't going nowhere. You sitting and he sees you not moving on that ramp. You ain't getting on that ramp. Sometimes when traffic is too bad, that's not the best time to drive because you're going to get a lot of cancels, a lot of damn, a lot of U-turns, especially on Lyft because they'll match you with somebody else. Why you going this way? It'll be something. They'll match you. Now you got to turn around and go back. And as you go in, they'll match you with somebody new. Now you got to make a right fucking turn. And it's like, what the fuck? I've been matched twice on the same ride. Quit doing that shit. So it's like, you've got to understand, man, the, it's the right time to do it. You can't just be out there. There's a... And, and like you say, how counterproductive it is. There's a thing called diminishing, diminishing marginal returns. A diminishing marginal return is when you do so much of something, you hit a fucking plateau. Like when you first start driving, it's like this. Then all of a sudden you get into your groove and it's like you start increasing at an increasing rate. You're making more money at an increasing rate. You're making more money at an increasing rate. Every hour is getting more lucrative. But there comes a point when the hours taper off. When now you're increasing, but it's at a decreasing rate. You're still making a little more, but not as much as you were making in this chunk of time. That's the chunk of time you're looking for. You don't give a fuck about increasing at a decreasing rate. you got to increase at an increasing rate. Find out in your market when you can increase at an increasing rate and say, that's when I'm going to fucking hit it. That's when I'm going to do it. And for the increasing at a decreasing rate areas, you've got to make them 
throw surge out there. You've got to make them throw good money out there to get you to stay out. If people are staying out when it's increasing at a decreasing rate, the apps have no reason to change. They've got the idiots out there. They're like, oh, man, 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 motherfucker. If, if everybody's staying out, driving nonstop, and the apps know, well, we ain't even throwing no surge out there. These dumb motherfuckers is out there taking rides. We ain't throwing nothing out these mo- Why don't, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, motherfucker. If it ain't broke, don't fix The engineers in there like, hey, this shit ain't broke. These motherfuckers taking these rides. They taking them. But it's increasing at a decreasing rate. So they're still making money. But instead of them making like $30, $40, $50 an hour doing this, they started out making $30. They went to $40. The bonuses and all this shit. Now they're making $50 to $60 an hour. Middle of the day, making $50, $60 an hour. Then they're all back down to $19 an hour, $22 an hour, $19 an hour. $15 $15 an hour. No, you're increasing. A, you're still making money, but it's at a very decreased rate. Cut that shit off. That's not when you want to be out there. Just be like, nope, I'm done. I'm done. It's too slow. Way too slow. Because that means there's other drivers out there that can use that money. Because if all drivers are out there doing the increase at the decreasing rate, the apps will never change. Make their ass go, hey, you know what? We need to throw some surge out there to get these motherfuckers out the house. Because ain't nobody driving right now. Clubs is about to close. Ain't nobody out. Motherfuckers and all went home at 11 p.m. because it was too slow. Throw some $20 surges out there. And motherfuckers be on their phones and shit, sitting on the couch. Oh, shit, $20 surge? That's just like around the corner from my house. Hold the fuck up. I get that shit all the time. Pop it up. Damn, $11 surge? Oh, shit, that's on 40th Street. Hold up. Let me. I don't even put the car cover on my car sometimes. I just leave it off because I'm like, I might go back out. King James do the same shit. He'll text me. Hey, dog, it was slow. I'm going back out at 2. I'm like, yep, me too. We do that shit all the fucking time. Because when it's slow, it's increasing at a decreasing rate. We get off the fucking road. And we let the drivers who don't know better stay out there. Because if you out there driving with no surge, bullshit rates, bullshit fares, nature hikes all over the fucking place, it's a waste. It's a complete waste. And most people, what they do is they want to sit up there and say, well, I know the surge is going to start at 2. I'm going to get my ride now. So you'll see a lot of people setting reservations at 11, 12 o'clock. They'll be setting rather for two, two fifteen, shit like that. But it'd be like, you know, 17 miles, $13 and 68 cents. They doing that shit because they know it's going to be a surge hit. So they'd be like, I don't want to pay surge pricing. So I'm just going to do this reservation. Out. Nope, not doing it. Not doing it. So what you do is you just wait that shit out. You hold out and you go back out again at two in the morning when you know they're going to be dropping them 15s, them 20s, them 10s. Go out and get that shit, man. Yeah, Zig said 80 hours of driving a week. They don't even want slaves that are real shit, man. Be like 4.30 in the morning to 11 at night. I'm like, why Why would people do that? I'm like, oh, I got to get that money, man. I got to get that money. There's a smarter way to get that money. We get profits. We don't care about the money. We want the profits. Because like I said, you can gross is what you want to gross. If you say, man, I make $1,000, how much did it cost you to make that 1000 That's the trick. That's your profit margin. If it costs you 200 to make that 1000 you only 5x in your money. You only 5x in it. It costs you $200 to make a thousand. You're 5x in your money. If it costs you a hundred to make a thousand, you're 10x in your money. So for every dollar you put up, you're getting $10 back. I'd rather do a 10x than do a 5x. 10x is a higher profit margin that you can live off of. You can bank some of that shit while you're living off that shit. If some people out there, they 15x they fucking money. For every $15 they put in, they do $150 in a quarter of a tank. Hey, man, I just put $15 in, quarter of a tank, made $150. That's crazy shit. They're 15 next and they fucking money or $175, $17.50 or something like that, $175. So they going nuts with the shit. And that's what we're trying to do with Roger. We're trying to educate people on how to, to maximize your, your, not just your revenue, but maximize your profit. Anybody can maximize your revenue. All you got to do is just drive nonstop. Like I said, a fucking chimpanzee can do that shit. Just put that motherfucker in the driver's seat and just say, you hit the goddamn gas pedal, and that motherfucker just keep driving. Anybody can do that. Driving more hours is the most simple-minded fucking way to do it. Business is a, that's why they call them business analysts. You got employee-minded, and you got the business analyst-minded people. The business analysts are going to be the ones out there that are going to have the higher profit margins. Higher profit margins help you live a certain lifestyle. Because now you got a little money sitting in the bank now. You could take a day off. You could take two days off. You could probably say, you know what? I'm going to you know, not drive that many hours for the next month, and I'm just going to maintain. So now you're hanging out with your daughter. You're going to fucking you know, saxophone class. Dad, you're at saxophone class with me? Yeah, I'm at saxophone class with you. I told you I was going to come to saxophone class with you. 
Thanks. Daughter happy as a motherfucker now. Your son like, damn, you came to my kickball game? Yeah, man, I came to your kickball game. I used to be the motherfucking kickball champion. 1985 kickball champion. I kicked that motherfucker over the bushes. Damn, my dad was a kickball champion. Yeah, now I'm here because you made all that profit and your ass got time now. I got time today, motherfucker. I got time. I'm going to come watch this motherfucking kid kick this shit over the fence like his dad did, god damn it. We had bushes. We didn't have no fence. We kicked that motherfucker over the bush. They'd be like, oh. And if it went over the bush, it was a hill behind the bush. Nobody wanted to go down the hill because everybody used to be like, dude, it's snakes down there. Because we lived in Memphis and it was water moccasins and shit. And it'd be standing water in some places. And everybody like, oh, man, there's snakes down there. So you see a bunch of fucking kickballs down in the goddamn ditch. And it's like, that's what it is. If you kick that motherfucker over, over the bush and it makes it to the edge, it's going to go over the bush, roll, and they go straight down into this ravine down there. And there's some standing water. Nobody ever went and got the kickballs. <laughs> it's like, nope, fuck that. If you did that, you was a bad motherfucker. Yeah, man, I kicked that shit over the bushes today, baby. Kickball champion 1988. <laughs> what Aaron said, I made $58 on a seven-minute ride for five miles. Hey, that shit, that's a good feeling, man. That's a good feeling right there. And I tell you, when them tips hit and the motherfucking surges are hitting at the same time, man, it, it's nothing better than, than on Uber. When you look on the Uber app, you see the amount at the top, and then you see like a tip here, and you see like a surge right next to it. Dude, I love seeing them three numbers. It's like a little triangle, man, a triangle of success. When you see the number at the top, the tip right here, the surge next to it, you'd be like, damn, damn. And that's what it is. When you, If you can line them motherfuckers up down your whole screen, you got the number at the top. It says tip right here, surge right here, ride after ride after ride after ride after, man, it's the goddamn triangle of success. Line that shit up about four or five times down your screen. Trust me. And when you get to the last one, look at the timestamp. It'll say like 8 o'clock p.m. Okay, 8 p.m. Look at the next one. That shit will say like 9.15. In an hour and 15 minutes of you being lined, add that shit up. You'd be like $112. What? Yeah, $112 in an hour and like 15 minutes. $112. Shit happens all the time, dude. Is that triangle of success. You got the, the fare sitting here, the, the total amount. Do you see how much of it was tipped? How much was surge? Keep that shit fucking banging. That means you stayed in one area, no miles. You was picking the shit out of an area, getting surge, tip, surge, tip, surge, tip. That little triangle all the way down the fucking screen, man. I love that shit. It's like, what? This is, oh, yeah, that's awesome. But sometimes they try to give me a reservation. 43 miles, 52 bucks. Shit don't make sense. Man, 43 miles is a shot away from home. That's a long way. Jay said, plus these cats running 80 hours, taking every ride, cars all banged up, backseat full of crumbs and hair, constantly gassing up a $46 rides with no tips. <laughs> Motherfuckers say they got backseat full of crumbs and hair. That's real shit. You be driving down the street doing this shit, hair all on you. Be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Motherfucker wig and shit just blowing all over the fucking car. Like, what the fuck? You think you're going through spider webs driving down the street just like motherfucker wig hair all over you. Like, damn, motherfucker shit. Man, in Memphis, there's always bad neighborhoods. The snakes know how to avoid. <laughs> the snakes don't even go to them neighborhoods, goddammit. The snakes be like, yeah, we ain't fucking with them kids, man. Them kids be having firecrackers. We ain't fucking with them kids. Shit. The other day, I got a call, XL call from Calabasas to Disney. 160 bucks. The husband gave me a $40 cash tip. Five minutes later, the wife tipped me 50 on out. Man. See, it's Disney, man. I, I was saying earlier, people are very happy. Happy people will fucking tip you. The miserable motherfuckers, they the ones that don't want to tip you, man. They, man, this shit costs too much already. But you know what? You could have just got another fucking ride. You really, you could have sat there for another hour and a half waiting on somebody to deal with your miserable ass. Instead of just saying, hey, thank you for coming to pick me up. No problem, isn't that? Hey, get you get you some motherfucking, you know, some cupcakes and shit, some donuts. You know, here's $3. Cool, thank you. But yet, oh, is it, these rides be causing you my motherfucking bitch at Uber. Bitch at Uber. Bitch at Lyft. Because we say the same shit. These rides are costing too much because it's tapping into our motherfucking, our tips. When they put the ride so high, this ride used to cost me $18. I don't know why it cost me $31. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't know why either, because I'm not getting more money out of the shit. They pay me the exact same amount. <laughs> Man. This is Jay. 
Jay, uh, rifles and Jay, they working for that AR, but the Costco membership and hot dog discount. <laughs> <laughs> these motherfuckers getting the Costco membership with a hot dog discount. They sitting out front dripping relish all over their shirt. And you can see the motherfuckers with high AR. Anybody with high AR got fucking pick a relish all out in front of their shirt. Because those motherfuckers be eating free hot dogs all day. They My AR is 91. Motherfucker, pickle juice all night. <laughs> like, dude, you been eating pickle relish or hot dog, mustard stains and shit on their shirt. That's why I'll pull up into the lot. You, punk, you be like, high AR. Hi, R. This motherfucker got nothing but mustard on his shirt. He probably like 99% AR. Hey, man, what's your AR? 98%? Told you. All the motherfucking mustard stains in them hot dogs. That's what it is. You got to see who the fuck's got mustard stains on them. Who got motherfucking pickle relish? Y'all motherfuckers be sitting in the car eating that shit. Front of their pants, greasy and green as a motherfucker from pickle relish. All them free hot dogs, man. Fucking lip. Uber and Lyft know them people, too. Uber be like, please send a picture you know, to verify who you are before your next ride. These motherfuckers got mustard on the side of their fucking mouth, got fucking ketchup all over them. Uber be like, yep, that's the right one. <laughs> we know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, get that platinum level, getting them discounts, goddammit, shit. Motherfucker, it's like, you wonder why all they motherfucking selfies be like, dude, you always have like yellow shit on your face and all your selfies. That's that goddamn mustard. There's a high AR driver. <laughs> Like every picture, you got mustard in your mustache and shit. You got pick a relish all in your beard and shit. High AR driver. That motherfucker eating them free hot dogs. <laughs> you ain't even got to ask a motherfucker if they high AR or not. Just, just say, hey, man, send me a picture. Yep, he's high AR. <laughs> like, how you know? Bro, look at all that mustard in his face. That motherfucker got mustard all over his shit. He high AR driver. <laughs> man, these motherfuckers. Man. So you ever heard the joke that Superman know that always flies around Memphis? He knows how dangerous this is. I know a funny shit. Superman even fly around Memphis, goddammit. Superman be like, shit, faster than the speed and bullet. Yeah, but not a whole lot of them. Man, he said them, them crusty donuts gonna have have gone up. Tell all the BBs, gas is almost five bucks, motherfucker. Gas is almost five bucks. Give me some, give me tip me, motherfucker. I gotta give me another donut. And so you see the low AR drivers, we got donut flakes all over us all the time because we got to pay for that shit. We can't afford no hot dogs. We eat no old crusty ass fucking donuts on sale. It's like the ones they about to throw out because they know they passed the timer. The timer went off a long time ago, but they've been working the cash register. They had time to throw the fucking donuts out. <laughs> so I'll be like, I'll be looking at those motherfuckers and they make a mistake and drop one. And that motherfucker roll. It like rolls away. It's like, how a whole fucking donut just start rolling? That shit's like a goddamn cartwheel. And I'm just rolling. It's like, yeah, them donuts is done. They done, man. Them motherfuckers crusty, dusty ass donuts. So you got to talk to them and be like, man, can I get like two of them for a buck? Like, I'm just a ride driver, man. That's it. Two, four dollar. Well, I could, but I got to sell them to you at full price. You finna throw them in the trash, man. If I throw them away, they're free. But if I sell them, I got to charge you full price. So I'm going to go stand in the fucking trash can. Just dump them in and I'll catch them. I'll have my shirt open. I'll just catch some donuts when you're dumping them in. Fuck it. Motherfucker, ragged ass motherfuckers. It's like, always oh, fuck with me, man. $100 cash tip. There you go. Shit. I don't think I got a $100 cash tip this year yet. Shit. This motherfucker tipped me $100 and dog eared the motherfucker. He tipped me 100 bucks and bent the ear down and said, now you got 200 <laughs> It's like, motherfucker, what? Shit. He says, bro, if you work Friday and Saturday late night and hang around Aguora and you pick up the big surge, just wait till you get two or three mile rides. Shh, man, that's what it is. If you're getting them two or three mile rides with big surge, oh, you in the same area, just keep double dipping on that surge. I try that shit all the time. How can I double dip a surge? And they don't like that. The apps hate that shit because they paying the same driver twice, giving you free money. And they know you, you're declining, declining, declining. Get that shit and take off. <laughs> KK said <laughs> It's a Jeff, you fucking funny dog. Shit. Hey, man, we be out here doing this shit for real, man. These motherfuckers don't get it. Ride shares, man. Ride share can be some funny shit. We see a lot of funny shit. And it's like, I be trying to explain to people, like, man, how do you do ride share for so long? It's like, at some point, you got to start realizing the comedy behind all the shit we do, the shit we get into. These motherfuckers running up on you like two, three o'clock in the fucking morning. They come up on skateboards and shit like motherfucking Tony Hawk. With goddamn dirty ass motherfucking mop water fucking squeegees. Hey man, you need your windshield clean? Motherfucker, it is nighttime. I can see fine. I don't need that shit all over my car. Cause when that shit goes into my air return, now the whole inside of my car smell like a motherfucking locker room. And I gotta pick people up. 
And they'd be like, man, this driver stank like a motherfucker. Nope. Tony Hawk and all his little skateboarder fucking buddies wash my goddamn windshield. The most nasty ass fucking squeegees, man. When they come up, I try to get out the parking lot. I see those motherfuckers, boy. As soon as these motherfuckers see your car pull in, boards down. Clack, clack. You hear the motherfucking boards hit the ground? Shit. I'm in drive. I pull out sideways like a motherfucker. I hear, when them skateboards hit the ground, they on their way. Clack, clack. Nope. I don't need no help, dog. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just getting gas. You sure? I'm on my way, motherfucker. I got my squeegee, motherfucker. And you don't get that motherfucking ragged ass skateboard away from me. I'm going to break that motherfucker. It's like when you hear them skateboards hit the ground, it's your time. And you don't, I swear, you can have your back turned. You can have, and you like pumping gas. You got your back turned and everything. All you hear is skateboard hit the ground. Like, oh, fuck. This motherfucker, they see me. And you try to sneak in because you like, oh, I snuck in. Hurry up, turn your motherfucking car up, turn the lights off. And sometimes if I walk around the car too fast, it'll go beep, beep. My car will beep a couple of times. That The motherfuckers, they like groundhogs. Beep, beep. They be like, <laughs> these motherfuckers pop up quick as a motherfucker. <laughs> they hear that shit. Beep, beep. Somebody just pull in. Somebody just pull in. You trying to get out of here? Nope. Hey, 539 in my area for the cheap shit. Yeah, yeah. All right, Aaron, man. Hey, go get that reservation. 2.30 in the morning, brother. Get that money. Get that money. Shit. Get that tip, brother. See if you can snag a surge before you go. And make sure you hit up Uber support and be like, hey, man, I had a surge on that ride. Shit. Yeah, but a lot of times, man, that's how it be. When they be at them gas stations, you got to get your gas and get the fuck out of there. Because, I mean, and the fact that we Uber drivers... They know we probably got a couple of bucks on us because we're going to go in and buy, you know, something to drink, probably buy something to eat. They know that shit, but they want that. They want that fucking money, man. Just a dollar, man. I'll clean your windshield. Two dollars, man. No, I'm cool. And even the, the homeless dudes, you know, they come walking up like motherfuckers be walking sideways and shit. And you know, when a motherfucker walks sideways, they they thinking of something to say to you. Like they homeless people never walk straight up to you. They don't walk up to like, hey, what's up, dog? Hey, man. Hey, sh- man, I'm down and out, bro. You know, now they motherfuckers be like, I'm like, motherfucker, you you ain't invisible, motherfucker. I see you. Shit. These motherfuckers. I'm like, dude, what you want, dog? What you want? I just, I call him out, man, what you want? Because, and they'll try to fucking sway or walk this way, and they'll kind of like swing a little bit and go the other way. Like, motherfucker, I see you. You are not invisible. Dust falling off your ass as you walk up. What do you want, man? <laughs> it's like, shit. Hey, man. I'm just trying to get something to drink. <laughs> it's like, I know it, shit. I see how you're walking up. Every once in a while, I'll fucking slide a motherfucker. Here, man, here's here's a dollar. All right, have some change in the car. I just give them all the change, especially in the Jeep. Have all the change in the middle. Here, man. Oh, man, thank you so much. All the fucking change. Pennies, dimes, nickels, quarters, everything. Just all the change. I don't let them be like, oh, shit, I got like $6. It's like, I don't know, but you got to count that shit because I'm not counting none of it. It's a lot. All fucking change. Hate that shit. Man, man, man. Woo, y'all got me in here dying laughing, dude. What, three hours? Man, we've been doing this shit. I don't know how much my last live. My last live was about an hour, I think. It was about a la- about an hour. But this one was better. This one came through. The sound never died. We was doing well, doing well. My dog, he's been in the room the whole time. I cannot believe it. He didn't escape not once. He's over there l- looking at me mad. Exactly, ride flow. I be doing that shit, man. It be like screws and shit from stuff that I found in the floorboard. I'm like, where the fuck this screw come from? Old fucking car. <laughs> screws, bolts, motherfucker, everything, paper clips. I'm like, I don't even have paper clips. I'm like, where the fucking paper clip come from? I don't even deal with paper. Everybody got a paper clip in their cup holder. Like, where the fuck does paper clip come from? <laughs> you be like, have I been to an office lately and I just don't know it? Like, how the fuck about Shit, motherfucker got a bobby pin. Bobby pins was big back in the day. Everywhere you go, motherfuckers have bobby pins. Them little motherfuckers with the hooks on the end and shit. I be like, where the fuck do bobby pins even come from? What the fuck? No, I'm not, man. Like I said, my tires ain't in yet. I ain't going nowhere till my tires come in. And the thing is, is that I was driving. I was doing just fine driving. It's like the car, it was holding a little air. Cool. It would hold air. As long as the car drives, it holds air. But as I was doing the oil, I forgot to tell y'all. As I was doing the oil, I'm going to take a picture of this shit when I take the tire off. The car was up in the air, so I rotated the tire. 
And it even happened on my old front tires. And I should have known this shit from the old front tires. I think the camber is off. The outside of my tires that you could see when you walk up to the car look perfectly fine. Totally fine. Look like brand new motherfucking tires. The inside, the metal rails are showing. The radios are showing on the inside. That's where the air leak is. I think the tires got a leak somewhere because it's like I hit something and it like split the tire a little bit. So if I would have kept driving it, I think the tire would have blew up. Now, had I not changed my oil, I would have never saw that. Had oil, had air never been seeping out of my tire a little bit every night, I would have never known that. Because I would air it up and I would drive and the car was perfectly fine. I was like, damn, I put your 38 in it, drive all day, still 36. I'm like, dude, it's just like a little small leak. It ain't that bad. But then I park it, come out the next day, shit be down to fucking 22. You're like, how the fuck do I, I can drive for like five hours and nothing, but if I park it for five hours, it's flat. Because I was, it was pressing the tire. Like as long as the tire is pressed, it won't let air come out. So as the tire was turning, it was pressing it over and over and over again. And the faster you go, the more it presses that spot. Without that spot pressed down, the rubber wasn't seated against the rubber. So you could see the radials in there. That's where the air was coming from. So, yeah, I, and I wouldn't have never saw it had I not, you know, did my oil change the other night and I had the car jacked up. And I was like, what the fuck is that shiny thing on my tire? I'm like, did I hit a nail or something? So I spent the tire. Nope, it's the radials on the inside. Man, I think the tires are like kind of the camber is off. So next time I put the new tires on, I'm going to ask BMW, is there any way I can adjust the camber? Because this is the second tire I've taken off of this car on the front that where the inside radials are showing and the outside looks perfectly brand new. So I don't know, man. And like I said, I could drive the car. I just don't want to risk it because if this tire fucking pops, me trying to go out and make $150, $200 and I flip this motherfucking car, I'm going to be mad as a motherfucker because I'm like, I knew better. I knew what was wrong with the fucking tire, but I kept pushing. Oh, I'm just going to go slow. I'm just going to go slow. That's all. I'm going to go slow. Anybody can say that shit. All oh, the air stays in as long as the tire is moving. I'm going to go slow. You eventually got to get on the highway. You hit a pothole or something too big on the highway. Bam. Pow. Car fucking spins, flips. And they're like, well, you made 150 bucks tonight, but you fucking owe $30,000 of the bank for this car. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, you should have just left that motherfucker parked. And that's my bad because the tires I got in the garage are rear tires. Like I've got new tires on there for the rear, but I got other rear tires that are new in the garage too. I never got front tires. I wasn't thinking. And for the Jeep, I got a whole nother set of tires. I wasn't thinking about front tires until it was too late. I had them in my watch list on eBay. I just bought them too late because I should have bought them when I first put them in the watch list. Then they just be sitting in my garage waiting for me to put them on. Nope. I ordered them. Now I'm just fucking they and they shipped in from Florida because that was the best prices I could get was Florida. But I didn't know it was going to take like all oh, I thought it'd take like maybe two days. I'm like, shit. And I'm like, I'm not going to risk it and, you know, try to drive and make money while these tires are being shipped in. I could go to another shop, get some tires slammed on there and use these two tires here as my new replacements. But these tires got ninety six thousand miles on them. So. I mean, it'll be another two years before I need those. They'll be sitting in my garage for two fucking years. They'll probably be dry rotted by them. So I'm like, nah, fuck it. Just wait it out. Just wait it out. I ain't in the rush right now, man. I got a, a lot of shirts I got to finish making. Like I said, usually I, when I'm not driving or I get up, I'll knock out like three or four shirts, get them in the mail, get them out to people and stuff like that. And I, I wasn't planning on making many shirts this year, but it's been fun, you know, making shirts, getting shirts out, people laughing and shit when they get them in the mail. It's been pretty fun. So, you know, I'm... I've been making a lot of more shirts this year than I did last year. More for ride shirt, but usually I make a lot of bike shirts. More for ride shirt this year. So people are like, you know, enjoying the, the gear. It makes them laugh, makes them feel like, you know, especially when you're wearing your Lyft shirt or your Uber shirt and you're out cruising or whatever, you feel like you're actually doing something. You're like dressed for the fucking job, even though it's like a T-shirt. And people be like, oh, man, you, you got the official gear of Lyft? I'm like, yeah, what you talking about, man? That's Lyft. Damn, well, do you like work for Lyft or something? Like, how do you get Lyft shirts? I'm like, ah, long story. <laughs> well, people love it, though. When you get in the car and they see Lyft, they feel a little better. They feel more secure. Like, you just ain't some fucking riffraff picking their ass up. You like, you actually, like, got something to do with this ride share shit because you wearing ride share gear. Get out at the airport. I'm like, you know, lifting up shit, putting things in a car, this and that. And everybody's like, oh, damn, man, he's actually like a Lyft guy. He's like, he's got like Uber gear on. He's got Lyft gear on. He's actually someone who works with this shit. 
not just some dude with a motherfucking button down on, get out the fucking car looking like, you know, just walked out of the office and you want to get the last couple of hours of ride share in. Like, who the fuck is this dude? This motherfucker got a lumberjack motherfucking button down on in the middle of summertime. It's like 110 degrees. This motherfucker got a fleece motherfucking button down on at the airport. <laughs> it's like, where the fuck you come from? The woods? This motherfucker was in the woods before he started doing ride share. It's like, God damn. So you get out, you got your gear on, you feel better, you're riding. That's how I like it. But man, 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 it's three hours and 14 minutes. I appreciate you guys for listening in, man. We always have a good time. A lot of good laughs, a lot of good laughs. I appreciate all the super chats tonight. I mean, you guys really helped me out. Like I said, Lisa, I appreciate that. I'm going to hook you up, Lisa. I'm going to hook you up. Because like I said, you, you're taking care of me, so I'm, I'm going to take care of you back. You got some. When you wake up tomorrow, you're going to see this video and be like, shit, let me hurry up message you. And for everybody out there that sends Super Chats, you know what, man? You guys are amazing, man. It's truly amazing. And we're going to try to keep this channel growing, keep it going, keep educating drivers, keep the shit rides out of our phone. And at some point, the, the apps are going to say, okay, we need to stop sending these shit rides. Nobody's picking them up. They're just recycling over and over to like 50 different drivers. Nobody's getting them. Stop taking them. Listen to the youth. Understand the, the evolution of thought is in works right now. We need to evolve as drivers. If we don't evolve, we're going to revolve. That means we're going to start right back over to where the fuck we were. We got to evolve, become something different, not revolve. Keep repeating the same shit over and over again. So let's go out and get this money, y'all. I appreciate you guys, man. Hopefully tomorrow I can jump on in the daytime. It's only 10 o'clock. I got to get out here and fix this fucking car. So peace.